Sunan an Nasai, The Book of Divorce Chapter on Divorce at the Time When Allah Has Stated That Women May Be Divorced Nafi narrated from Abdullah that he divorced his wife while she was menstruating. Omar asked the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him about that and said, Abdullah has divorced his wife while she was menstruating. He said, Tell Abdullah to take her back, then leave her until she becomes pure from this menstrual period, then menstruates again, then when she becomes pure again. If he wishes, he may separate from her before having intercourse with her. Or if he wishes, he may keep her. This is the time when Allah the Mighty and Sublime has stated that women may be divorced. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. Sexual intercourse during menstruation is forbidden. Man normally feels no desire for his wife in this condition. It is quite possible one might rush to pronounce divorce. Hence, the divine law has forbidden divorcing in this condition. If someone commits this mistake, he shall have to resort to returning or taking the woman back. A divorce would, however, be counted whether or not he takes her back, but if he does not pronounce the third divorce, the marriage would not be terminated. If it is the third divorce, returning would not be permitted. The marriage is over. 2. During menstruation, the returning would take place verbally. At the end of menstruation, the returning would be practical. That is to say, one ought to have sexual intercourse. Thereupon, if one desires, one may resort to divorce during the next purity. 3. We learn that the appropriate time of divorcing is in the state of purity during which the husband has not had sexual intercourse with her. This is why the Prophet, peace be upon him, commanded the divorce be given after the intervention of one more menstrual cycle in the state of purity. Because in the first period of purity, returning was done in the form of sexual intercourse. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that he divorced his wife while she was menstruating during the time of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. Umar bin al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about that. And the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Tell him to take her back and keep her until she becomes pure, then menstruates again and becomes pure again. Then if he wishes, he may keep her, or if he wishes, he may divorce her before he touches, has intercourse with her. This is the time when Allah the Mighty and Sublime has stated that women may be divorced. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Salim bin Abdullah bin Umar narrated that Abdullah bin Umar said, I divorced my wife during the lifetime of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him while she was menstruating. Umar mentioned that to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him got angry about that and said, Let him take her back, then keep her until she has menstruated again and become pure again. Then if he wants to divorce her when she is pure and before he touches her, has intercourse with her, then that is divorce at the prescribed time as Allah the Mighty and Sublime has revealed. Abdullah bin Umar said, So I took her back but I still counted the divorce that I had issued to her. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments The majority of the people of knowledge maintain that although divorcing in the state of menstruation is sinful and forbidden and returning or taking back of the wife is essential, but such kind of divorce would be reckoned as one divorce. Now two more divorces remain. Some researchers, however, have ruled such kind of divorce null and void because returning in it is essential. Even so, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, could not have counseled Ibn Umar May Allah be pleased with him to give two divorces instead of one. Although this argumentation appears rationally strong, the wording of the relevant narrations, the statements of the companions, and in addition the schools of thoughts of various scholars are contrary to it. Abdullah bin Ayman asked Ibn Umar while Abu Az-Zubair was listening, What did you think about a man who divorces his wife when she is menstruating? He said to him, Abdullah bin Umar divorced his wife when she was menstruating during the time of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. Umar asked the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him about that and said, Abdullah bin Umar has divorced his wife while she was menstruating. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Let him take her back. So he made me take her back. He said, When she becomes pure, let him divorce her or keep her. Ibn Umar said, The Prophet peace be upon him said, O Prophet, when you divorce women, divorce them before their idda, prescribed period elapses. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote. It is a reference to At-Talaq, chapter 65, verse 1, while the wording is different. Comments. Because the waiting period is counted from menstruation, hence the waiting period would not commence if the divorce is given in the state of menstruation. 
If the menstrual cycle is counted, the waiting period would fall short, and if it is not counted, the waiting period would become long. Hence, the divorce should take place in the state of purity, so that the waiting period could commence with menses. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas concerning the saying of Allah the Mighty and Sublime, O Prophet, when you divorce women, divorce them at their idda, prescribed periods. Quran, Surah At-Talaq, Chapter 65, Verse 1 Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Before their idda elapses. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Footnote, before their idda elapses, that is, when they become pure following menstruation before intercourse. Comments, the purpose of Ibn Abbas saying this is that divorce should take place well before the waiting period. That means during the state of purity because the waiting period commences with menstruation. If divorce takes place during menses, it would be during the waiting period, which is not right. Chapter on the Sunnah Divorce It was narrated from Abdullah that he said, The Sunnah Divorce is a divorce issued when she is pure, not menstruating without having had intercourse with her. If she menstruates and becomes pure again, give her another divorce. And if she menstruates and becomes pure again, give her another divorce. Then after that, she should wait for another menstrual cycle. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. One of the narrators, Al-Amash, said, I asked Ibrahim and he said something similar. Comments This narration demonstrates the clear guidelines for an irrevocable divorce. It was narrated that Abdullah said the sunnah divorce is to divorce her when she is pure, not menstruating without having had intercourse with her. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Chapter on what should be done if the husband issues a divorce when the wife is menstruating. It was narrated from Abdullah that he issued a divorce to his wife when she was menstruating, so Umar went to inform the Prophet peace be upon him about that. The Prophet peace be upon him said to him, Tell Abdullah to take her back. Then, when she has performed ghusl, let him leave her alone until she menstruates again. Then, when she performs ghusl following that second period, he should not touch her until he divorces her. And if he wants to keep her, then let him keep her. That is the time when Allah has stated that women may be divorced. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that he divorced his wife while she was menstruating. He mentioned that to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he said, Tell him to take her back, then divorce her while she is pure, not menstruating or pregnant. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments from this we learn that divorcing in the state of pregnancy is also permitted. Chapter on Divorce Without the Idda It was narrated from Ibn Umar that he divorced his wife when she was menstruating but the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him told him to take her back and divorce her when she was pure, not menstruating. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Take her back means he, peace be upon him, did not consider this divorce right according to the rule of the divine law and commanded that she be taken back. It does not mean that he did not consider this divorce valid or he did not reckon it as is argued by some. Chapter on Divorce Without the Idda and What is Counted as a Divorce It was narrated that Yunus bin Jubair said, I asked Ibn Umar about a man who divorced his wife while she was menstruating. He said, Do you know Abdullah bin Umar? He divorced his wife while she was menstruating, and Umar asked the Prophet, peace be upon him, about that, and he told him to take her back, then wait for the right time. I said to him, Was that divorce counted? He said, Be quiet. What do you think if some becomes helpless and behaves foolishly? This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated that Yunus bin Jubair said, I said to Ibn Umar, a man divorced his wife while she was menstruating. He said, Do you know Abdullah bin Umar? He divorced his wife when she was menstruating. And Umar went to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and asked him about that. And he told him to take her back, then wait for the right time. I said to him, Was that divorce counted? He said, Be quiet. What do you think if some become helpless and behaves foolishly? This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on Three Simultaneous Divorces and a Stern Warning Against That Makhrama narrated that his father said, I heard Mahmud bin Labid say, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him was told about a man who had divorced his wife with three simultaneous divorces. He stood up angrily and said, Is the book of Allah being toyed with while I am still among you? Then a man stood up and said, O Messenger of Allah, shall I kill him? This hadith is graded sahih 
or authentic. Comments 1. In view of men's frailties and haste, the divine law has stipulated three phases of divorce and subsequent to the first two-fold divorces has kept the provision of returning or taking one's wife back so that such deep relationship does not become the prey of human hastiness. A man who divorces rather should reflect and contemplate and make a decision keeping the passionate emotions at bay. The one who pronounced a threefold divorce is simultaneously lost, as it were, all these three opportunities and turned the matter of eminent relationship into sport and relinquished it to hastiness. So much so that now no possibility of reunion with the woman remained. He therefore openly disobeyed or violated the clearly manifest Quranic guidance that the divorce be given separately. 2. It becomes known that giving threefold divorce together or simultaneously is contrary to the divine law. Imam Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on him, is the proponent of this viewpoint, but Imam Shafi does not consider it forbidden, because man has the right of three pronouncements of divorce. He made use of it as he desired it. If he has lost the phased opportunities, it is his loss. 3. If someone commits this sacrosanct act of pronouncing threefold divorces simultaneously, according to the dominant majority of scholars, all the divorces shall be considered effected, and the woman shall become forbidden for him. Chapter on Concession Allowing Three Simultaneous Divorces Sahal bin Saad al-Sayyidi narrated that Uwamir al-Ajlani came to Asim bin Adi and said, What do you think, O Asim, if a man finds another man with his wife? Should he kill him and be killed in retaliation? Or what should he do? O Asim, ask the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him about that for me. So Asim asked the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him about that, and the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him disapproved of the question and criticized the asking of too many questions until Asim felt upset. When Asim went back to his people, O Amir came to him and said, O Asim, what did the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him say to you? Asim said, You have not brought me any good. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him disapproved of the question you asked. O Amir said, By Allah, I will go and ask the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. So he went to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and found him in the midst of the people. He said, O Messenger of Allah, what do you think if a man finds another man with his wife? Should he kill him and be killed in retaliation or what should he do? The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Something has been revealed concerning you and your wife, so go and bring her here. Sahal said, So they engaged in the procedure of Li'an, and I was among the people in the presence of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. When Oamir finished, he said, I would have been telling lies about her, O Messenger of Allah, if I keep her. So he divorced her thrice before the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him told him to do so. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. Killed in retaliation because imposition of the prescribed legal penalty or the had is upon government. No one can individually impose the prescribed legal penalty of his own. Therefore, if someone kills a person in a fit of rage who he finds sleeping with his wife, he would thereupon be killed by way of rightful retaliation if he fails to produce four eyewitnesses. Otherwise, it would provide people with an excuse to indulge in an orgy of killing. On the day of resurrection, however, Allah Most High would treat him in accordance with his knowledge of things, which means if the slain had really committed the crime of adultery and was married, the killer would be forgiven, or otherwise he would be punished. 2. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, disapproved of the question because he thought these were hypothetical questions, and asking hypothetical questions is shamefully disgusting. Allah Most High had knowledge that the incident had already taken place, hence he sent down the revelation. 3. The detail concerning the lian, invoking curse, is coming up, Allah willing. 4. He divorced her with three pronouncements, and Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, did not stop him. It becomes known that giving a threefold divorce simultaneously is permissible, but the marriage itself was ended by lian. There is no need of divorce as it makes divorce redundant. Therefore, his act of giving threefold divorce was superfluous and futile. This is why the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not stop him abruptly. Fatima bint Qais said, I came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, I am the daughter of Ali Khalid, and my husband, so-and-so, sent word to me, divorcing me. I asked his family for provision and shelter, but they refused. They said, O Messenger of Allah, he sent word to her, divorcing her thrice. She said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The woman is still entitled to provision and shelter if the husband can still take her back. 
this hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, the woman is still entitled to provision and shelter if the husband can still take her back, meaning in the case of the first or second divorce. Comments, this narration has appeared in the book at various places. Some narrations say he divorced me three times, some contain, he gave me an irrevocable ultimate divorce, while some have, he gave me the final divorce of three divorces. Hence, deriving legal ruling about the permissibility of giving a threefold divorce simultaneously from this narration is not right, because by putting together all the narrations, it emerges that her husband had conveyed the third divorce. Two divorces he had already used earlier. See Hadith 3224. It was narrated from Fatima bin Tikas that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The thrice divorced woman is not entitled to provision and shelter. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments This narration too makes no mention of giving three divorces together. Fatima bint Qais narrated that Abu Amr bin Hafs al-Makhzumi divorced her thrice. Khalid bin al-Walid went with a group of the tribe of Makhzum to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and said, O Messenger of Allah, Abu Amr bin Hafs has divorced Fatima thrice. Is she entitled to provision? He said, She is not entitled to provision nor shelter. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments It is not clear whether she was given three divorces together or separately. The wording contained the possibility of dual meaning. It emerges by putting together other reports that the third divorce was given. It is also called the absolutely separating divorce, literally, batta. Putting together the previous two divorces, the figure three was stated. This reconciliation is essential so that all the related narrations be understood especially when Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, has expressed his displeasure over giving three divorces together. See number 3430. Chapter on Three Separate Divorces Before Consummation of the Marriage It was narrated from Ibn Ta'us, from his father, that Abu As-Sahba came to Ibn Abbas and said, O Ibn Abbas, did you not know that the threefold divorce during the time of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and Abu Bakr, and during the early part of Omar's caliphate used to be counted as one divorce? He said yes. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments This hadith does not specify whether the divorce was pronounced before the first coition in marriage or following it, pre-coital or post-coital. Imam an nasai has interpreted this hadith in order to make it coherent with the dominant majority of the people of knowledge that the three divorces mentioned in this narration are of that woman with whom one has not yet had sexual intercourse. See Hadith 3430. Chapter on the divorce of a woman who married a man but he did not consummate the marriage with her. It was narrated that Aisha said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him was asked about a man who divorced his wife and she married another man who had a closed meeting with her then divorced her before having intercourse with her. Is it permissible for her to remarry the first husband? The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, No not until the second one tastes her sweetness and she tastes his sweetness. This hadith is graded da'i for weak. Comments See Hadith 3238 It was narrated that Aisha said, The wife of Rafa'ah al-Qurazi came to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and said, O Messenger of Allah, I got married to Abdurrahman bin Az-Zabir and what he has is like this fringe. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Perhaps you want to go back to Rafa'ah? No, not until he, Abdurrahman, tastes your sweetness and you taste his sweetness. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments See Hadith 3285 Chapter on the Irrevocable Divorce It was narrated that Aisha said, The wife of Rafa'a al-Qurazi came to the Prophet peace be upon him when Abu Bakr was with him. And she said, O Messenger of Allah, I was married to Rafa'a al-Qurazi and he divorced me and made it irrevocable. Then I married Abdurrahman bin Az-Zabir, and by Allah, O Messenger of Allah, what he has is like this fringe. And she held up a fringe of her jilbab. Khalid bin Said was at the door, and he did not let him in. He said, O Abu Bakr, do you not hear this woman speaking in such an audacious manner in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him? He said, Do you want to go back to Rifa'a? No, not until you taste his sweetness, and he tastes your sweetness. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments See Hadith 3285 Chapter on It is up to you Hamad bin Zad said, 
I said to Ayub, Do you know anyone who said concerning the phrase, It is up to you, that it is equivalent to three divorces except Al-Hasan? He said, No. Then he said, O oh Allah, grant forgiveness. Sorry. Qatada narrated to me from Kathir, the freed slave of Ibn Sumura from Abu Salama from Abu Huraira, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, 3. I met Kathir and asked him and he did not know of it. I went back to Qatada and told him and he said, he forgot. This hadith is graded da'i for weak. Abu Abdurrahman al Nasai said, this hadith is munkar. Comments? 1. If the husband addresses his wife saying, your matter or command is in your hand, means you have the choice to take divorce. If you desire, you may take it. If the wife states, I have taken the divorce, how many divorces shall have to be given her? Some individuals are the proponents of three divorces, which means such a woman would be permanently separated from him. But according to the majority of the people of knowledge, only one divorce will be effected upon her because the term divorce is meaningfully indicative of only one divorce. 2. O oh Allah, grant forgiveness means I made a mistake, and I said no in haste. He sought forgiveness for his hastiness. Otherwise, the wrong committed out of forgetfulness or done unwittingly stands forgiven by Allah Most High. 3. Kathir forgot. If some transmitter forgets the hadith after transmitting it, but his pupil who transmits the hadith is trustworthy, the narration would be reliable. Forgetfulness would not cast any effect upon the authenticity of the report. Chapter on making a thrice-divorced woman lawful to return to her first husband and the marriage that makes this lawful. It was narrated that Aisha said, The wife of Rifa'a came to the messenger of Allah peace be upon him and said, My husband divorced me and made it irrevocable. After that I married Abdurrahman bin Az-Zabir and what he has is like the fringe of a garment. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, smiled and said, Perhaps you want to go back to Rafa'a? No, not until he tastes your sweetness and you taste his sweetness. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated from Aisha that a man divorced his wife three times and she married another husband who divorced her before having intercourse with her. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was asked, Is she permissible for the first husband to remarry her? He said, no, not until he tastes her sweetness as the first tasted her sweetness. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments For the detail of this issue, please turn to Hadith 3285. It was narrated from Abdullah bin Abbas that Al-Ghumasa or Ar-Rumasa came to the Prophet peace be upon him complaining that her husband would not have intercourse with her. It was not long before her husband came and said, O Messenger of Allah, she is lying. He is having intercourse with her, but she wants to go back to her first husband. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, She cannot do that until she tastes his sweetness. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Footnote In the narration of Ahmed, number 1837, and others through the same route, the narrator is Ubaidullah bin al Abbas rather than Abdullah. Also, in reference to the odd manner in which the man spoke about himself in the narration of Ahmed and others, the statement is about what the man said, not a quote of what the man said. Comments 1. That woman, according to her claim, could not return to her former husband in marriage because, according to her, her new husband was not able to copulate with her. Unless he copulates with her and divorces her, she cannot return to her former husband. Hence, her own statement went against her. 2. Rumasa was the title of Umm Salim, the mother of Anas, but she was another woman. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, concerning a man who had a wife and he divorced her, then she married another man who divorced her before consummating the marriage with her, and it was asked whether she could go back to her first husband. No, not until she tastes his sweetness. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated that Ibn Umar said, the Prophet, peace be upon him, was asked about a man who divorced his wife three times. Then another man married her, and he closed the door and drew the curtain, then divorced her before consummating the marriage with her. He said, she is not permissible for the first one to remarry her until the second one has had intercourse with her. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Abu Abdurrahman al-Nasai said, this is more worthy of being correct. Chapter on making a thrice-divorced woman lawful to return to her first husband and the stern warning concerning that. It was narrated that Abdullah said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him cursed the woman who tattoos and the one tattooed. 
the woman who fixed hair extensions, and the one who had her hair get extended, the consumer of riba, and the one who pays it, and al muhallil and al muhallil lahu. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote. Al Muhallil is the man who marries a woman in order to divorce her so that she can go back to her first husband. Al Muhallil Lahu is the first husband for whom this is done. Comments 1. Since such people violate the inherent instinctive nature, they are deserving of the curse. 2. The joiner or fastener of hair. To add artificial hair to one's genuine hair, hair extensions, is cheating and deception, which is contrary to the human innate nature. 3. The taker and giver of riba. Interest. The bedrock of interest is miserliness and selfishness, which is contrary to the innate human nature. Since the giver of interest is conducive to keeping the corrupt system of interest in perpetuity, he was also associated within the ruling of interest. 4. The one who makes the woman lawful means the man who marries a woman who has been irrevocably divorced on the condition of his divorcing her after copulating with her, in order that she may become lawful to be married to the former husband. Chapter on a man divorcing his wife face to face. It was narrated from Aisha that when the Kilabi woman entered upon the Prophet, peace be upon him, she said, I seek refuge with Allah from you. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, You have sought refuge with one who is great. Go back to your family. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. The Kilabi woman. Her name was Fatima bint Dahak. Her father had contracted her marriage with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. The controversy is, why did she utter these words? I seek Allah's refuge from you. It occurs in some reports that someone had deceptively told her that if she uttered these words in her first meeting with the Prophet, peace be upon him, he would become very glad. Or she was probably not happy about the marriage committed by her father and she therefore uttered these words. Whatever the situation might have been, the Prophet, peace be upon him, divorced her. 3. Go back to your family. If these words are uttered with the intention of divorcing, the divorce shall come into effect. Chapter on a man sending word to his wife that she is divorced. It was narrated that Abu Bakr, the son of Abu al-Jaham, said, I heard Fatima bint Qas say, My husband sent word to me that I was divorced, so I put on my garments and went to the Prophet, peace be upon him. He said, How many times did he divorce you? I said, Three. He said, You are not entitled to maintenance. Observe your idda in the house of your paternal cousin Ibn Umm Maktoum, for he is blind, and you can take off your garments there. And when your idda is over, let me know. This is an abridgment. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments You can take off your garments means superfluous garments, not all. For details, see hadith 3424. A similar report was narrated from Tamim, the freed slave of Fatima, from Fatima. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on meaning of the saying of Allah, the mighty and sublime. O Prophet, why do you forbid for yourself that which Allah has allowed to you? Quran Surah At-Tahrim, chapter 66, verse 1. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, A man came to him and said, I have made my wife forbidden to myself. He said, You are lying. She is not forbidden to you. Then he recited this verse, O Prophet, why do you forbid for yourself that which Allah has allowed to you? Quran Surah At-Tahrim, chapter 66, verse 1. And he said, You have to offer the severest form of expiation, freeing a slave. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Comments 1. You are lying means you're calling your wife unlawful to yourself is a lie and something wrong because how could a wife be unlawful? 2. The severest form because you have said the most detestable thing. The wife would not become unlawful, but you will have to undergo a severe punishment for having uttered such words. See Hadith 3411. 3. Freeing a slave. The apparent wording of the glorious Quran corroborates kafara al-yamin, atonement for swearing in such situations, which consist of, in addition to freeing of a slave, feeding people who are poor or short of money or to provide clothing or fasting also. Chapter on another explanation of the meaning of this verse. Obad bin Omad narrated from Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to stay with Zana bint Jash and drink honey at her house. Hafsa and I agreed that if the Prophet, peace be upon him, came to either of us, she would say, 
I detect the smell of marafir, a nasty smelling gum on you. Have you eaten marafir? He came to one of them and she said that to him. He said, no, rather I drank honey at the house of Zana bint Tejesh, but I will never do it again. Then the following was revealed. O Prophet, why do you forbid for yourself that which Allah has allowed to you? Quran Surah At-Tahrim Chapter 66 Verse 1 If you too turn in repentance to Allah, it will be better for you. Quran Surah At-Tahrim Chapter 66 Verse 4 Addressing Aisha and Hafsa And remember when the Prophet disclosed a matter in confidence to one of his wives. Quran Surah At-Tahrim Chapter 66 Verse 3 Refers to him saying, No, rather I drank honey. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments For details, see Hadith 3410. Chapter on Go to your family does not necessarily mean divorce. Kaab bin Malik narrated the hadith about when he stayed behind and did not join the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him on the expedition to Tabuk. He told the story and said, The envoy of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him came to me and said, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, commands you to stay away from your wife. I said, Shall I divorce her or what? He said, No, just keep away from her and do not approach her. I said to my wife, Go to your family and stay with them until Allah the Mighty and Sublime decides concerning this matter. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments If the unequivocal term divorce is uttered, it would invariably signify divorce, whether it was intended or not but there are certain statements which could be meant to signify divorce. At the same time, some other meanings could also be meant. Abdurrahman bin Abdullah bin Kaab bin Malik narrated that his father said, I heard my father Kaab bin Malik, who was one of the three whose repentance was accepted, say, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sent word to me and to my two companions, saying, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, commands you to keep away from your wives. I said to his envoy, Shall I divorce my wife, or what should I do? He said, No, just keep away from her and do not approach her. I said to my wife, Go to your family and stay with them. So she went to them. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments 1. Do not approach her means do not copulate with her, etc. Talking to the wife was not forbidden. But Kaab was concerned that in the event of staying near her, he might engage in sexual intercourse with her, etc. He, therefore, asked his wife to go to her parents' house. 2. Those whose repentance was accepted. Going to the campaign of Tabuk had become an individual obligatory duty. Hence, those who did not participate were interrogated. The hypocrites saved face by telling lies, but became the fuel of hellfire. Three sincere Muslims had also stayed back slothfully. They admitted their mistake. They did not contrive any excuse and surrendered themselves to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, commanded the community to shun them. No one greeted or until the earth despite all its vastness had become too narrow for them and their souls had become utterly constricted but they remained loyal to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. Finally, after 50 days, the revelation of the acceptance of their repentance descended and their ordeal ended. These venerable personages became the dwellers of paradise by undergoing the most severe hardship. Their names are Kaab bin Malik, Murra bin Rabia, and Hilal bin Umayya. May Allah be pleased with them all. May Allah shower His mercy upon them. Abdurrahman bin Abdullah bin Kaab bin Malik narrated that Abdullah bin Kaab said, I heard Kaab narrate the hadith about when he stayed behind and did not join the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him on the expedition to Tabuk. He said, The envoy of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him came to me and said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him commands you to keep away from your wife. I said, Shall I divorce her or what should I do? He said, no, just keep away from her and do not approach her. And he sent similar instructions to my two companions. I said to my wife, go to your family and stay with them until Allah the Mighty and Sublime decides concerning this matter. They were contradicted by Makil bin Ubaidullah. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, Makil bin Ubaidullah, he contradicted Yunus bin Yazid, al Ali. Ishaq bin Rashid and Ukal bin Khalid, all of whom reported from Azuri, from Abdurrahman bin Abdullah, from Abdullah, from Kaab bin Malik. Makil mentioned Azuri from Abdurrahman, from Ubaidullah, from Kaab bin Malik. It was narrated from Makil from Azuri who said, Abdurrahman bin Abdullah bin Kaab narrated that his paternal uncle, Ubaidullah bin Kaab, said, I heard my father Kaab say, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sent word to me and my two companions saying, 
The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, commands you to keep away from your wives. I said to the envoy, should I divorce my wife or what should I do? He said, no, just keep away from her and do not come near her. I said to my wife, go to your family and stay with them until Allah the Mighty and Sublime decides concerning me. So she went to them. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Abdurrahman bin Ka'b bin Malik that his father said, The envoy of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him came to me and said, Keep away from your wife. I said, Should I divorce her? He said, No, but do not approach her. And he, the narrator, did not mention the words, Go to your family. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on Divorce of a Slave it was narrated from Omar bin Mu'tab that Abu Hassan, the freed slave of Banu Nafil, said, My wife and I were slaves, and I divorced her twice, then we were both set free. I asked Ibn Abbas, and he said, If you take her back, you have two divorces left. This is how the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, ruled. This hadith is graded da'i for weak. Ma'mad contradicted him. Footnote, Ma'mad contradicted him, that is, Ali bin al-Mubarak. Comments a free man has three pronouncements of divorce, but a slave has two. The transmitter of this hadith had already given two divorces when he was still a slave, but both of them were freed during the period of waiting. The freedom invested him with the right to the third pronouncement of divorce. Hence, he had the privilege of returning and contracting a new marriage upon the expiration of the period of waiting. It was narrated that Abu al-Hassan, the freed slave of Banu Nafal said, Ibn Abbas was asked about a slave who divorced his wife twice, then they were set free. Could he marry her? He said, yes. He said, from whom did you hear that? He said, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, issued a fatwa to that effect. This hadith is graded da'i for weak. One of the narrators, Abdul Razak, said, Ibn al-Mubarak said to Ma'mad, which al-Hassan is this? He has taken on a heavy burden. Comments. A heavy burden, meaning by narrating this which supports a view that was not popular. Chapter on When Does the Divorce of a Boy Count? It was narrated that Kathir bin Asayib said, The sons of Qurayza told me that they were presented to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him on the day of Qurayza. And whoever among them had reached puberty or had grown pubic hair was killed. And whoever had not reached puberty and had not grown pubic hair was left alive. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. Banu Qurayza was a Jewish clan which had entered an allegiance of loyalty with the Muslims. But on the fragile occasion of the Battle of Trench, they allied with the pagan Quraysh and indulged an internal rebellion. When the Battle of Trench ended, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, besieged Banu Qurayza so that they could be punished for their rebellion. Hence, he, peace be upon him, handed over the verdict into the hands of Sa'ad bin Mu'az. He returned the verdict that all their adults would be killed and the minors would be taken captive. 2. The purpose of mentioning this narration under this chapter is to demonstrate that the prescribed legal punishment is not implemented upon a non-adult or minor. Hence, his pronouncement of divorce would not be valid. He may divorce on reaching the age of puberty. 3. There are three signs of puberty. Wet dreams, pubic hair, or when one reaches the age of 15 years. Since it is difficult to determine the exact age in males, other signs are evidence. They will therefore be relied upon. It was narrated that Atiya al-Qurazi said, On the day that Sa'ad passed judgment on Banu Qureza, I was a young boy, and they were not sure about me, but they did not find any pubic hair, so they let me live, and here I am among you. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. It was narrated from Ibn Umar, that he presented himself to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, on the day of Uhud when he was 14 years old. But he did not permit him to join the army. He presented himself on the day of Al-Khandaq when he was 15 years old, and he permitted him to join the army. This hadith is graded sahih, or authentic. Comments In government official documents, a boy of the age of 15 years would be recorded as an adult, and less than that a minor. This is because governments do keep records of birth, etc. Chapter on the husband whose divorce is not valid. It was narrated from Aisha that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, The pen has been lifted from three, from the sleeper until he wakes up, from the minor until he grows up, and from the insane until he comes back to his senses or recovers. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Chapter on the one who utters a divorce to himself without uttering the words loudly. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that one of the narrators, Abdurrahman, said, 
the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Allah the Most High has forgiven my Ummah for everything that enters the mind, so long as it is not spoken of or put into action. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Allah the Mighty and Sublime has forgiven my Ummah for what is whispered to them or what enters their minds, so long as they do not act upon it or speak of it. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet peace be upon him said, Allah the Most High has forgiven my Ummah for whatever enters the mind, so long as it is not spoken of or put into action. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on Divorce with a Clear Gesture It was narrated that Anas said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him had a Persian neighbor who was good at making soup. He came to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him one day when Aisha was with him and gestured to him with his hand to come. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him gestured toward Aisha meaning, what about her? And the man gestured to him like this meaning, no, two or three times. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments. The speech impaired also might need to divorce, but since they can communicate by gestures only, the gesticulation ought to be held reliable. The gesture, however, should be clear so that the intention or the implicit meaning is unmistakably comprehended. Chapter on Speaking When One Means What the Words Appear to Mean It was narrated that Omar bin al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Actions are but by intentions, and each man will have but that which he intended. Whoever emigrated for the sake of Allah and his Messenger, his emigration was for the sake of Allah and his Messenger. And whoever emigrated for the sake of some worldly gain or to marry some woman, his emigration was for that for which he emigrated. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments The purpose of Imam an nasai is that when someone utters a word which bears the possibility of divorcing and also some other connotation, then the divorce would be considered to have been effected only when the speaker had intended it. Otherwise, the divorce would be considered ineffective. For instance, somebody tells his wife, Go away from my house. This hadith has proceeded in detail earlier. See hadith number 75. Chapter on saying something and intending something other than the apparent meaning carries no weight. Abu Huraira narrated that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Look at how Allah diverts the insults and curses of Quraysh from me. They insult Mudhammam and curse Mudhammam, but I am Muhammad. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote Mudhammam was an offensive play on words, as Mudhammam means blameworthy, the opposite of the meaning of the name Muhammad, praiseworthy. Comments When the Makkah and Quraysh failed in their plots, they would fume with indignation and abuse the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. But while cursing and defaming, they would utter the word Mudhammam instead of Muhammad, because Muhammad signifies a person whom everyone praises. Therefore, they used to substitute the word Muhammad with Mudhammam, reprehensible, and would revile him. Thus, Allah Most High saved the Prophet, peace be upon him, from such abuse and maligning. Chapter on Setting a Time Limit for Making a Choice It was narrated that Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was commanded to give his wives the choice, he started with me and said, I am going to say something to you, and you do not have to rush to make a decision until you consult your parents. She said, He knew that my parents would never tell me to leave him. She said, then he recited this verse, O Prophet, say to your wives, if you desire the life of this world and its glitter, then come. I will make a provision for you and set you free in a handsome manner. Quran, Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 28. I said, do I need to consult my parents concerning this? I desire Allah the Mighty and Sublime and His Messenger and the home of the hereafter. Aisha said, Then the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, all did the same as I did, and that was not counted as a divorce. When the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, gave them the choice and they chose him. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. A husband may give the choice of divorce to his wife, saying, If you so desire, you may be divorced. If the woman responds and says, I want the divorce, the divorce would become effective. There is, however, a disagreement whether such a divorce would be revocable or irrevocable. 2. The purpose of the author in saying this is that it is not necessary that the woman should reply immediately upon being given the choice. 
If the husband fixes a time period in that duration, she can acquire the divorce. As the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, gave Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, a respite, that there is no harm if she does not respond at once. She might respond after consulting her parents. See number 3203. It was narrated that Aisha said, when the following was revealed, But if you desire Allah and His Messenger, Quran Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 29, the Prophet, peace be upon him, came and started with me. He said, O Aisha, I am going to say something to you, and you do not have to rush to make a decision until you consult your parents. She said, He knew by Allah that my parents would never tell me to leave him. Then he recited to me, O Prophet, say to your wives, if you desire the life of this world and its glitter. Quran Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 28. I said, Do I need to consult my parents concerning this? I desire Allah and His Messenger. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Abdurrahman an Nasai said, This is a mistake and the first is more worthy of being correct and Allah glorious is He and Most High knows best. Chapter on when a woman is given the choice and chooses her husband. It was narrated that Aisha said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him gave us the choice and we chose him. Was that a divorce? This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments this means the divorce does not become effective by granting. It was narrated that Aisha said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him gave his wives the choice, but that was not a divorce. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Masruq that Aisha said, The Prophet peace be upon him gave his wives the choice, and that was not a divorce. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated that Aisha said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, gave his wives the choice, Was that a divorce? This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated that Aisha said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, gave us the choice and we chose him, and that was not counted as anything. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on Choosing Which of the Two Married Slaves to Free First It was narrated that Al-Qasim bin Muhammad said, Aisha had a male slave and a female slave. She said, I wanted to set them free and I mentioned that to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. He said, start with the male slave before the female slave. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments Emancipation enhances the status. Therefore, if a married slave woman is freed and her husband is still a slave, the woman shall have the right to decide whether she would like to remain in the wedlock of a slave or not. If the husband is, however, a free man, the woman does not acquire this right after being freed. That is why Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, had commanded her to set the husband free first, so that the woman might not terminate the marriage. Breaking the tie of marriage becomes the cause of many evils. Chapter on Giving a Slave Woman the Choice It was narrated that Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Three Sunan were established because of Barida. One of those sunan was that she was set free and was given the choice concerning her husband. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Al-Wala is to the one who set the slave free. And the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, entered when some meat was being cooked in a pot, but bread and some condiments were brought to him. He said, Do I not see a pot in which some meat is being cooked? They said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah, that is meat that was given in charity to Barira, and you do not eat food given in charity. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, It is charity for her and a gift for us. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. She was given an option in regard to her husband because her husband, Mughith, was a slave. But Ira had ended the marriage. 2. The right of inheritance of a slave, al-wala, means the right of the emancipator, which he has over his freed slave. But Ira asked Aisha concerning her freedom. The owner consented to sell her but began to demand the right of inheritance, al-wala, for himself, although this right belongs to the emancipator who sets the captive free. 3. It is a gift for us. From this we understand that the thing which in itself is not contaminated or forbidden, its status may change. And the details regarding this are lengthy. It was narrated that Aisha said, Three judgments were established because of Barira. Her masters wanted to sell her but they stipulated that al-wala should still be to them. I mentioned that to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he said, Buy her and set her free, for Al-Wala is to the one who sets the slave free. She was set free, and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, gave her the choice, and she chose herself. And she used to be given charity, and she would give some of it as a gift to us. 
I mentioned that to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he said, Eat it, for it is charity for her and a gift for us. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, gave her the choice and she chose herself, meaning she did not want to go back to her husband who was still a slave. Chapter on giving the choice to a slave woman who is set free and whose husband is a free man. It was narrated that Aisha said, I bought Barida and her masters stipulated that her vala should go to them. I mentioned that to the Prophet peace be upon him and he said, Set her free and al-vala is to the one who pays the silver. So I set her free and the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him called her and gave her the choice concerning her husband. She said, Even if you gave me such and such, I would not stay with him. So she chose herself and her husband was a free man. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. The one who pays means the right of al-vala is for the one who buys and emancipates. 2. Her husband was a free man. These are not the words of Aisha but Aswad who is a successor, Tabi'i, and he was not present on the occasion. A manifest clarification has been transmitted from Aisha and Ibn Abbas that he was a slave. It was narrated from Aisha that she wanted to buy Barira, but her master stipulated that her vala should go to them. She mentioned that to the Prophet peace be upon him and he said, Buy her and set her free, for al-vala is to the one who sets the slave free. Some meat was brought and it was said, This is some of that which was given in charity to Barira. He said, It is charity for her and a gift for us. And the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him gave her the choice and her husband was a free man. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments. For details, see hadith 3476, 3477, and 3479. Chapter on giving the choice to a slave woman who has been set free and whose husband is still a slave. It was narrated that Aisha said, Barita made a contract that she would be freed in return for nine avak, one ukya, to be paid each year. She came to Aisha asking for help and she said, no, not unless they agree to accept the sum in one payment and that the vala will go to me. Barira went and spoke to her masters, but they insisted that the vala should be for them. She came to Aisha and the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, came and she told her what her masters had said. She said, No, by Allah, not unless vala is to me. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, What is this? She said, O messenger of Allah, Barira came to me and asked me to help her with her contract of manumission. And I said, no, not unless they agree to accept the sum in one payment and that the vala will be for me. She mentioned that to her masters and they insisted that the vala should be for them. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, buy her and stipulate that the vala is for the one who sets the slave free. Then he stood up and addressed the people and said, what is the matter with people who stipulate conditions that are not in the book of Allah, the mighty and sublime? They say, I set so and so free, but the vala will be to me. Every condition that is not in the book of Allah the Mighty and Sublime is a false condition, even if there are a hundred conditions. And the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him gave her the choice with regard to her husband who was still a slave, and she chose herself. Urwa said, If I had been free, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him would not have given her the choice. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, Kitabah, a writ of emancipation, when a price for freedom is agreed upon. The author has provided a sample of such in the section of contracts in the Book of Agriculture, Chapter 48. Comments 1. Nine ukyas. One ukya consisted of 40 dirhams. Nine ukya add up to 360 dirhams. 2. From the apparent Arabic phrasing of this narration, it appears that Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, wanted to acquire the right of al-wala by paying the full amount in one installment to Barira with a view to helping her. But this perception is not right. The sermon of Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, and other narrations corroborate that Aisha wanted to buy and emancipate her. Had it been the former case, the viewpoint of the Barira's owners would have been appropriate. 3. The condition which is not found in the Book of Allah is not valid means the conditions which go against the explicit elucidation of the Book of Allah. Otherwise, it is not necessary that every condition be found in the Book of Allah. It was narrated that Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, The husband of Barira was a slave. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Aisha that she bought Barira from some of the Ansar who stipulated that her vala should go to them. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, 
Al-Wala is to the one who did the favor of setting the slave free. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him gave her the choice, as her husband was a slave. And she gave some meat to Aisha as a gift, and the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Why don't you give me some of this meat? Aisha said, It was given in charity to Barira. He said, It is charity for her and a gift for us. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Yahya bin Abi Bukair al-Karmani said, Shubha narrated to us from Abdurrahman bin al-Qasim, from his father from Aisha, he, Shubha said, and he, Abdurrahman, was the executor for his father. He, Shubha said, I was afraid to say to him, Did you hear this from your father? Aisha said, I asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about Barira, as I wanted to buy her, but it was stipulated that the Wala would go to her former masters. He said, Buy her, for the Wala is to the one who sets the slave free. And she was given the choice, as her husband was a slave. Then he said, After that, I do not know. And some meat was brought to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and they said, This is some of that which was given in charity to Barira. He said, It is charity for her and a gift for us. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote. Then he said, After that, I do not know. This refers to whether her husband was a slave or not. In a narration of Al Bukhari, 2578, it is Abdurrahman said her husband was free or a slave. Shoba said, I asked Abdurrahman about her husband. He said, I do not know, was he free or a slave? Comments. I do not know whether he had been a free man or a slave. By one transmitter's forgetfulness, the sound report of the rest of the narrators does not become weak. The result of the details have already been discussed in two or three chapters which have proceeded earlier. Chapter on the Oath of Abstinence Ibn Abbas said, One morning we saw the wives of the Prophet peace be upon him weeping and each one of them had her family with her. I entered the masjid and found it filled with people. Then Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, came and went to the Prophet peace be upon him who was in his room. He greeted him with the salam, but no one answered. He greeted him again, but no one answered. He greeted him a third time, but no one answered. So he went back and called out, Bilal. He came to the Prophet peace be upon him and said, Have you divorced your wives? He said, No, but I have sworn an oath of abstention from them for a month. So he stayed away from them for 29 days, then he came and went into his wives. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. Ilah, in its literal sense, signifies to vow, but here it means swearing to abstain from intercourse with one's wife. If the husband is angry with his wife and swears in this manner, he may only maintain the vow for four months. On expiration of the duration of four months, he must either copulate with his wife, breaking the oath, and pay the expiation for the oath, or he will be obliged to divorce her. If he denies both these things, the current ruler or a magistrate, etc., would bring into effect the divorce using their own authority. Thus, the wife would become separated from her husband. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, had sworn off his wives for one month only, and he fulfilled it. 2. They, the Prophet's peace be upon him, wives were weeping. It had occurred to them that perhaps taking such a vow equals a divorce, or they were weeping because of the Prophet's peace be upon him, displeasure and separation. 3. No one answered means permission to enter was not given. They might have returned the greeting in a low voice. 4. 29 days, because a month could consist of 29 days as well as 30 days. The divine law has ruled 29 days as a full month. Hence, if the vow is for one month, upon the expiation of 29 days, the vow would be fulfilled, for whatever objective it might have been. It was narrated that Anas said, The Prophet, peace be upon him, swore an oath of abstention from his wives for a month and stayed in his room for 29 days. It was said, O Messenger of Allah, did you not swear an oath of abstention for a month? He said, This month is 29 days. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on Az-Zihar Footnote Az-Zihar When a man says to his wife, You are to me as my mother's back. Intimacy with her thus becomes forbidden, but she was left in a kind of limbo, as she was not fully divorced or allowed to seek marriage with another. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that a man came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, who had declared zihad from his wife, then he had intercourse with her. He said, O Messenger of Allah, I declared zihad on my wife, then I had intercourse with her before I offered the expiation. He said, What made you do that? May Allah have mercy on you. He said, I saw her anklets in the light of the moon. 
He said, Do not approach her until you have done that which Allah the Mighty and Sublime has commanded. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Zihar means someone tells his wife, You are like my mother's back to me. The objective happens to be to forbid one's wife upon oneself. If some other words are used to forbid her, then expiation for the oath is enough. But if someone forbids one's wife upon oneself, by comparing her with one's mother's back, a very severe expiation shall have to be given. Because the mother is an extremely revered person. To call one's wife one's mother in order to forbid her is a grave insult to mother. The expiation for zihad consists of freeing a slave, if not possible, to fast the days of two consecutive months. If this is not possible, then the expiation is to feed 60 poor people. Sexual intercourse is forbidden until the expiation is performed. It was narrated that Ikrama said, A man declared zihad to his wife, then had intercourse with her before he had offered the expiation. He mentioned that to the Prophet peace be upon him. The Prophet peace be upon him said to him, What made you do that? He said, May Allah have mercy on you, O Messenger of Allah. I saw her anklets or her calves in the light of the moon. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Keep away from her until you have done that which Allah the Mighty and Sublime has commanded. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments 1. If someone copulates with one's wife after having committed zihar and before performing the prescribed expiation, then it is a sin. But only one expiation shall have to be performed, because the zihad was committed only once. Some have imposed upon him a dual expiation, but it is not correct. 2. May Allah have mercy on you. In the previous narration, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, had supplicated for him even though he had perpetrated a sin. But Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, was the most excellent teacher and an affectionate leader. The Prophet, peace be upon him, corrected the wrongdoers by his excellent character. Ikrama said, a man came to the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, O Prophet of Allah, and that he had declared zihad to his wife. Then he had intercourse with her before he did what he had to do. He said, What made you do that? He said, O Prophet of Allah, I saw the whiteness of her calves in the moonlight. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Keep away until you have done what you have to do. One of the narrators, Ishaq, said in his hadith, Keep away from her until you have done what you have to do. The wording is that of Muhammad. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Abu Abdurrahman an Nasai said, The Mursal is more worthy of being considered correct than the Musnad of this narration. And Allah glorious is He and Most High knows best. Footnote, the Mursal is more worthy of being considered correct than the Musnad of this narration. The second version which he reported here is from Ikrama, which is Mursal, while the first is also from him but attributed to Ibn Abbas. It was narrated from Aisha that she said, Praise be to Allah, whose hearing encompasses all voices. Khawla came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, complaining about her husband, but I could not hear what she said. Then Allah, the Mighty and Sublime, revealed, Indeed, Allah has heard the statement of her that disputes with you concerning her husband and complains to Allah. And Allah hears the argument between you both. Quran, Surah al mujadila Chapter 58, Verse 1 This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Khawla's husband had also declared zihad to her. She thought she had perhaps become forbidden for her husband. It moreover causes humiliation to the children. Allah Most High prescribed expiation out of His infinite mercy. He did not render the wife unlawful. And praise be to Allah. Chapter on what was narrated concerning Qula. It was narrated from Ayyub, from Al-Hassan, from Abu Huraira, that the Prophet peace be upon him said, Women who seek divorce and khula are like the female hypocrites. Al-Hassan said, I did not hear it from anyone other than Abu Huraira. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Abdurrahman an nasai said, Al-Hassan did not hear anything from Abu Huraira. Footnote, women who seek divorce and khula, meaning for no legitimate reason. The author has supplied a sample of an agreement for khula in the section of contracts prior to chapter 48 of the Book of Agriculture. Comments. Are hypocrites means in spite of being under the wedlock of their husbands, they are ungrateful to them. Just as a hypocrite is insincere to Islam in spite of his pronouncement of the testification, in the same way these women have been compared to hypocrites. They are not branded real hypocrites. A Muslim, however, should not portray such evil comparisons. But demanding to be let go due to a genuine excuse is permissible. Such a woman will not fall under this category. It was narrated from Yahya bin Said from Amra bint Abdurrahman that she told him about Habiba bint Sahel. 
She was married to Thabit bin Qas bin Shamas. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, went out to pray Asub, and he found Habiba bin Sahl at his door at the end of the night. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Who is this? She said, I am Habiba bin Sahl, O Messenger of Allah. He said, What is the matter? She said, I cannot live with Thabit bin Qas, her husband. When Thabit bin Qas came, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said to him, Here is Habiba bin Sahl, and she has said what Allah willed she should say. Habiba said, O Messenger of Allah, Everything that he gave me is with me. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Take it from her. So he took it from her, and she stayed with her family. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. A woman's demand to be let go by her husband is called kula. In such a situation, the husband may demand the return of the dower and other gifts given to his wife if he so desires. He, however, may not take anything in addition to it from her personal possessions or wealth. Now the husband would not be able to take her back. If, however, both of them so desire, they may contract a new marriage after the expiration of the waiting period. 2. The waiting period of a woman who acquires khula is three menstrual cycles only according to the Hanafites, while Imam Ashafi maintains that the waiting period is only one menstrual cycle so that pregnancy is verified. This is supported by a narration that follows later. See number 3527. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that the wife of Thabit bin Qas came to the Prophet peace be upon him and said, O Messenger of Allah, I do not find any fault with Thabit bin Qas regarding his attitude or religious commitment, but I hate kufr after becoming Muslim. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Will you give him back his garden? She said, Yes. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, Take back the garden and divorce her once. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments. I detest kufr after becoming Muslim, meaning she did not like him and was afraid she might not show him the respect due to a husband. Kufran, translated unbelief, can also mean ingratitude. To abhor the husband while residing in his house, to quarrel with him, and to displease him are deeds which are all prohibited in Islam. Conversely, they are the deeds of kufr. But kufr also means ingratitude toward the husband. Ingratitude is also called kufr in the Arabic language. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, A man came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, My wife does not object if anyone touches her. He said, Divorce her if you wish. He said, I am afraid that I will miss her. He said, Then stay with her as much as you need to. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments See Hadith 3231 It was narrated from Ibn Abbas that a man said, O Messenger of Allah, I have a wife who does not object if anyone touches her. He said, divorce her. He said, I cannot live without her. He said, then keep her. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. This is a mistake and what is correct is that it is mursal. Footnote. This is a mistake and what is correct is that it is mursal. He explains in Al-Kubra that this particular chain going through Hamad bin Salama has a mistake in it, in that others narrated it from him without the mention of Ibn Abbas. Comments. Both the above recorded narrations seem to have no relevance with the chapter. They are, however, relevant to the issue of divorce. For instance, it is not necessary to resort to divorce upon such petty circumstances. See Hadith 3231. Chapter on the beginning of Al-Liyan, the curse. It was narrated from Sahl bin Saad from Asim bin Adi who said, O Amir, a man from Banu Ajlan, came and said, O Asim, what do you think if a man sees another man with his wife? Should he kill him and be killed in retaliation, or what should he do? O Asim, ask the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about that for me. So Asim asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about that, and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, disapproved of the question and criticized the asking of too many questions. Then Oemir came to him and said, What happened, O Asim? Asim said to Oemir, What happened? You have not brought me any good. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, disapproved of the question I asked. O Amir said, By Allah, I will go and ask the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. So he went to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and asked him. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Allah the Mighty and Sublime has revealed something concerning you and your wife, so bring her here. Sahel said, I was among the people in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he brought her and they engaged in the procedure of Lian. He said, O Messenger of Allah, By Allah, if I keep her, I would have been telling lies about her. 
So he parted from her before the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, told him to separate from her, and that became the way of Li'an. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments A man who witnesses his wife in the state of adultery and has no other witnesses except himself, then the divine law has made special provision for the husband to deal with such a situation. An ordinary person may not disclose the matter to anyone. He shall have to remain silent, but the husband is permitted to present himself before the court of law. The court would summon the wife also. Both of them would take oaths. If one of them refuses to take oath, he or she shall be punished. The man will be punished for accusation and the woman for adultery. If both of them take oaths, the court would annul their marriage and would say nothing to either of them. The method of lian, mutual cursing, is coming up. See also Hadith 3431. Chapter on Lian because of pregnancy. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, conducted the procedure of Lian between the Ajlani and his wife, who was pregnant. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. If a woman becomes pregnant and her husband has certitude that the pregnancy is the result of adultery and not caused by him, he may go to the court of law to bring a suit against the woman. The court would summon the woman and bring about the invocation of the curse. 2. Lian is supplicating for the curse of Allah upon the liar. Since while swearing man usually curses the liar, this process was named Lian. Chapter on Lian because of the man accusing his wife of adultery with a specific person. It was narrated that Muhammad said, I asked Anas bin Malik about that as I thought that he had knowledge of that. He said Hilal bin Umayyah accused his wife of committing adultery with Sharik bin As-Sahma, who was the brother of Al-Bara bin Malik through his mother. He was the first one who engaged in the procedure of Lian. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, conducted the procedure of Lian between them. Then he said, Look and see. If she produces a child who is white with straight hair and kadiya eyes, then he belongs to Hilal bin Umayyah. And if she produces a child who has dark lines around his eyes, curly hair and narrow calves, then he belongs to Sharik bin As-Sahma. I was told that she produced a child who has dark lines around his eyes, curly hair and narrow calves. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote. Look and see if she produces a child who is white with straight hair and kadiya's eyes. Ibn al-Athir, al-Nihaya, Ibn al-Manzur, Lisan al-Arab, al-Nawawi, Shar Muslim, al-Siyuti, and al-Sindi, and al-Sana'ani all said it means his eyes are bad due to redness being too small or excessive tearing or the like. See the definition in the text after number 3499. Comments. We get to learn that Hilal bin Umayyah told the truth, but since both the wife and the husband had taken the oath, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, did not punish the woman because punishment is meted out based only on the testimony of the witnesses or confession. Here, neither existed. In such situations, the punishment is consigned to the will of Allah. Chapter on How Lian is Carried Out It was narrated that Anas bin Malik said, the first lian in Islam was when Hilal bin Umayyah accused Sharik bin As-Sahma of committing adultery with his wife. He came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and told him about that. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Bring four witnesses, otherwise you will feel the had punishment on your back. And he repeated that several times. Hilal said to him, By Allah, O Messenger of Allah, Allah the Mighty and Sublime knows that I am telling the truth, and Allah the Mighty and Sublime will certainly reveal to you that which will spare my back from the whip. While they were like that, the verse of Lian was revealed to him. As to those who accuse their wives, Quran, Surah an nur chapter 24, verse 6. He called Hilal and he bore witness four times by Allah that he was telling the truth, and the fifth time he invoked the curse of Allah upon him if he were lying. Then he called the woman and she bore witness four times by Allah that he was lying. When it came to the fourth or fifth time, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Stop her, for it will inevitably bring the punishment of Allah upon the liar. She hesitated until we thought that she was going to confess. Then she said, I will not dishonor my people today. Then she went ahead with the oath. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Wait and see. If she produces a child who is white, with straight hair and kadiya eyes, then he belongs to Hilal bin Umayyah. But if she produces a child who is dark with curly hair, of average size and with narrow calves, then he belongs to Sharik bin As-Sahma. 
She produced a child who was dark with curly hair of average size and with narrow calves. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Had not the matter been settled by the Book of Allah, I would have punished her severely. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. The Shaykh said, Kadiyah I, long eyelashes, not the opening of the eye or their protrusion, and Allah glorious is He and Most High knows best. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, the Shaykh, it is apparent that it refers to an nasai Comments, 1. Punishment on your back, because the accuser shall be whipped for accusing a person of adultery without proof. Qadf. 2. Oath for the fifth time. The wife's fifth oath would be, if he, my husband, is truthful, the curse of Allah will be upon me. 3. When such allegation is made, four witnesses are required. Chapter on the Imam saying, O Allah, make it clear to me. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, Mention of Lian was made in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and Asim bin Adi said something about that, then he went away. A man from among his people came to him complaining that he had found a man with his wife. Asim said, I was only put to this test because of what I said. He took him to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and told him of the situation in which he found his wife. That man was pale and slim with straight hair, and the one whom he claimed to have found with his wife was dark and well built. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O oh Allah, make it clear to me. Then she gave birth to a child who resembled the one whom her husband said he had found with her. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, conducted the procedure of Lian between them. A man in the gathering sent to Ibn Abbas, Was she the one of whom the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, If I were to have stoned anyone without evidence, I would have stoned this one? Ibn Abbas said, No, that was a woman who used to do mischief even after becoming Muslim. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated that Abdullah bin Abbas said, Mention of Lian was made in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and Asim bin Adi said something about that. Then he went away. He was met by a man from among his people who told him that he had found a man with his wife. He took him to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and told him of the situation in which he found his wife. That man was pale and slim with straight hair, and the one whom he claimed to have found with his wife was dark and well-built with very curly hair. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O oh Allah, make it clear to me. Then she gave birth to a child who resembled the one whom her husband said he had found with her. So the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, conducted the procedure of Lian between them. A man in the gathering said to Ibn Abbas, Was she the one of whom the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, If I were to have stoned anyone without evidence, I would have stoned this one? Ibn Abbas said, No, that was a woman who used to do mischief even after becoming Muslim. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on the command to place the hand over the mouth of the two who are engaging in lian when they utter the fifth oath. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas when the Prophet, peace be upon him, commanded the two who were engaging in Lian to utter the fifth oath, he commanded a man to place his hand over his mouth, and he said, It will inevitably bring the punishment upon the liar. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, it will inevitably bring the punishment upon the liar. The wordings of the text differ slightly from the wordings of the chapter heading, so take note. A Sindhi said, meaning the mouth of the man who was involved in the lian, and it does not refer to the woman except if he is a madam to her. And the meaning of this hadith is similar to number 3499 from Anas, where the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Stop her, for it will inevitably bring the punishment of Allah upon the liar. Comments Before the fifth oath, there is possibility of retraction. Retraction is not possible after the fifth oath. Thereupon the matter is consigned to Allah Most High. That is why a hand should be placed over the swearer's mouth that if he or she is lying, they should stop at that. A woman would place her hand upon a woman's mouth. Chapter on the Imam exhorting the man and woman at the time of Lian. Abdul Malik bin Abi Suleiman said, I heard Sayyid bin Jabbar say, I was asked about the two who engage in Lian during the governorship of Ibn Az-Zubair. Should they be separated? I did not know what to say. So I got up and went to the house of Ibn Umar and said, O oh Abu Abdurrahman, should the two who engage in Lian be separated? He said, Yes, subhanAllah. The first one who asked about that was so-and-so, the son of so-and-so, who said, O oh Messenger of Allah, 
What do you think if a man among us sees his wife committing immoral actions, and if he speaks of it, he will be speaking of a grave matter, but if he keeps quiet, he will be keeping quiet about a grave matter? He did not answer him. Then after that, he came to him and said, I was tried with the matter that I asked you about, so Allah the Mighty and Sublime revealed these verses in Surah An-Nur. And for those who accused their wives until he reached, and the fifth testimony should be that the wrath of Allah be upon her if he, her husband, speaks the truth. Quran, Surah An-Nur, chapter 24, verses 6 to 9. So he started with the man exhorting him, reminding him, and telling him that the punishment in this world was less severe than the punishment in the hereafter. He said, By the one who sent you with the truth, I am not lying. Then he turned to the woman and exhorted her and reminded her. She said, By the one who sent you with the truth, he is lying. So he started with the man, and he bore witness four times by Allah that he was telling the truth. And the fifth time, he invoked the curse of Allah upon himself if he was lying. Then he turned to the woman, and she bore witness four times by Allah that he was lying. And the fifth time, she invoked the wrath of Allah upon herself if he was telling the truth. Then he separated them. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. Punishment of this world means the had. If the husband has lied, the penalty for hurling accusation would be 80 lashes, and if the wife has indulged in adultery, her penalty for adultery would be stoning to death, whereas the torment of the hereafter is hellfire, except what Allah wills. 2. He, peace be upon him, then effected separation between the two because after such accusations, their remaining together as husband and wife is disgraceful, and this is an agreed-upon issue. Chapter on Separating the Two Who Engage in Lian it was narrated that Sayyid bin Jabir said, Al-Musab did not separate the two who engaged in Lian. Sayyid said, I mentioned that to Ibn Umar and he said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him separated the couple from Banu Ajlan. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Musab refers to Musab bin Zubair. He was the brother of Abdullah bin Zubair and was the governor of Iraq on behalf of Abdullah bin Zubair. Chapter on Asking the Two Who Engaged in Lian to Repent After Lian It was narrated from Ayyub that Sayyid bin Jabir said, I said to Ibn Umar, a man accused his wife. He said the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him separated the couple from Banu Ajlan and said, Allah knows that one of you is lying, so will either of you repent? He said that to them three times and they did not respond. Then he separated them. One of the narrators, Ayyub said, Amr bin Dinar said, In this hadith, there is something that I think you are not narrating. He said, The man said, My wealth. He said, You are not entitled to any wealth. If you are telling the truth, you have consummated the marriage with her. And if you are lying, then you are even less entitled to it. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, If you are telling the truth, you have consummated the marriage with her, meaning so, she is entitled to the mahar. Comments My wealth his desire was that since this marriage is being ended on account of the woman's crime, I should get back the dower that I paid her at the time of marriage. The gist of the Prophet's peace be upon him command is that there is no certitude concerning your lying or telling the truth. It is possible you are truthful and it is also possible she is guiltless. Therefore, the dower cannot be returned. If you are truthful, you have benefited a lot from her. Hence, the demand of dower does not behove you. Chapter on Can the Two Who Have Engaged in the Procedure of Lian Stay Together? It was narrated that Amr said, I heard Sayyid bin Jubair say, I asked Ibn Umar about the two who engage in Lian. He said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said to the two who engaged in Lian, Your reckoning will be with Allah. One of you is lying, and you cannot stay with her. He said, O Messenger of Allah, my wealth. He said, You are not entitled to any wealth. If you are telling the truth about her, then it is in return for having been allowed intimacy with her. And if you are lying, then you are even less entitled to it. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments In no circumstances could they remarry. This is the view of the majority of the people of knowledge. It has, however, been attributed to Imam Abu Hanifa that he did not see it as absolute. And Allah knows best. Chapter on Denying the Child Through Lian and Attributing Him to His Mother It was narrated that Ibn Umar said, The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him conducted the procedure of Lian between a man and his wife, and he separated them and attributed the child to his mother. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 
Because the real contention was the child itself, the husband had been refuting any suggestion that the child was his. The mother, however, could never deny it. Hence, the child would be handed over to her, and the child would be attributed to the mother. This is because the husband is refusing to admit the paternity of the child, and paternity cannot be proved with an adulterer. Chapter on if a man hints an accusation about his wife and wanted to disown the child. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that a man from Banu Fazara came to the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, My wife has given birth to a black boy. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Do you have camels? He said, Yes. He said, What color are they? He said, Red. He said, Are there any gray ones among them? He said, There are some gray ones among them. He said, Where do you think they come from? He said, Perhaps it is hereditary. He said, Likewise, perhaps this is hereditary. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments. This man had doubt lest the child be illegitimate, but since he had not explicitly charged his wife with adultery or refute the child's paternity, the need for Lian did not arise. He, however, placed the issue before the Prophet, peace be upon him, that from the dimension of comprehension, the child is totally different. Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, removed his confusion by giving an extremely clear example that sometimes the child resembles to a distant genealogical father. It is possible one of your grandfathers or great-grandfathers might have been dark. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, A man from Banu Fazara came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and said, My wife has given birth to a black boy, and he wanted to disown him. He said, Do you have camels? He said, Yes. He said, What color are they? He said, Red. He said, Are there any gray ones among them? He said, There are some gray camels among them. He said, Why is that, do you think? He said, Perhaps it is hereditary? He said, Perhaps this is hereditary. And he did not permit him to disown him. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, While we were with the Prophet, peace be upon him, a man stood up and said, O Messenger of Allah, a black boy has been born to me. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, How did that happen? He said, I do not know. He said, Do you have camels? He said, Yes. He said, What color are they? He said, Red. He said, Are there any gray camels among them? He said, There are some gray camels among them. He said, Where do they come from? He said, I do not know, O Allah's Messenger. Perhaps it is hereditary. He said, Perhaps this is also a hereditary. Because of this, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, decreed the following. It is not allowed for a man to disown a child who is born on his bed unless he claimed that he had seen an immoral act. Fahisha. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments. 1. Several kinds of resemblances could be found in a newborn child genealogically, distant or near. Hence, a child cannot be disowned on account of color, complexion, eyes or features unless there is certitude of adultery with an eye of certainty. If someone negates the child, he shall have to perform lian or would be considered worthy of the punishment of had. 2. On his bed means born to his wife or his slave woman. Chapter on Stern Warning Against Disowning One's Child It was narrated from Abu Huraira that he heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him say when the verse of Mula'ana, Lian, was revealed, Any woman who falsely attributes a man to people to whom he does not belong has no share from Allah, and Allah will not admit her to his paradise. Any man who denies his son while looking at him, knowing that he is indeed his son, Allah the Mighty and Sublime will cast him away and disgrace him before the first and the last on the day of resurrection. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Footnote, any woman who falsely attributes a man, meaning a child born of adultery. Comments. 1. To whom he does not belong, means it is the result of adultery, but the woman ascribes it to her husband. 2. She has nothing to do with Allah. The meaning is that it is a great sin. It could become the cause of one's deprivation of Allah's mercy. Or it could be the explanation of the sentence that follows, Allah will not admit her into paradise. 3. When he is looking at him, it could be when the man is looking at the child thinking, this is my child. Chapter on attributing the child to the bed if the owner of the bed does not disown him. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Prophet peace be upon him said, the child is the beds and for the fornicator is the stone. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote. The child is the beds, that is, the man to whom the woman is actually married. He lies on her as a bed is laid upon. Comments. 1. 
the child born to a married woman would be conceived as belonging to her husband. In the same way, a child born to a slave woman would be conceived as belonging to her owner, unless the husband or the owner negates it, irrespective of whether there is probable proof of the child being illegitimate. This is because the child's legitimacy or illegitimacy is a concealed matter. It is difficult to get to the bottom of it. 2. The stone. It means nothing, and some say it means punishment. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The child is the beds, and for the fornicator is the stone. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated that Aisha said, Sa'ad bin Abi Vakas and Abda bin Zamah disputed over a boy. Sa'ad said, O Messenger of Allah, this is the son of my brother Utbah bin Abi Vakas, who made me promise to look after him because he is his son. Look at whom he resembles. Abd bin Zamah said, He is my brother who was born on my father's bed to his slave woman. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him looked to determine at whom he resembled and saw that he resembled Utbah. He said, He is for you, O Abd. The child is the beds and for the fornicator is the stone. Veil yourself from him, O Sauda bin Zamah. And he never saw Sauda again. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. The disputed child was born to the slave woman of Zama. In fact, he was fathered by Utbah. During the period of ignorance, Jahiliya, children born adulterously to slave girls were attributed to the claiming adulterer. The claim made by Saad had its roots in the custom of the past. But Islam ended this ignominious practice, so that now the child shall not be attributed to the adulterer. If the husband of the woman or her owner makes no denial, the child will be considered his. If he negates, the child shall be attributed to the mother who has given it birth. 2. Allah's messengers, peace be upon him, wife Soda was also the daughter of Zama. On account of this relation, the child was, in a way, her brother. But since he was in reality fathered by Utbah, Soda was commanded to observe hijab from him, in spite of his being a blood brother to her because he was not a legitimate brother. This dispute had taken place at the time of the conquest of Mecca. It was narrated that Abdullah bin az zubair said, Zamah had a slave woman with whom he used to have intercourse, but he suspected that someone else was also having intercourse with her. She gave birth to a child who resembled the one whom he suspected. Zamah died when she was pregnant, and Sada mentioned that to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The child is the beds, but veil yourself from him, O Sada, for he is not a brother of yours. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments the child is the beds. Now when the owner of the bed, owner of the slave woman, was deceased, there was no possibility of denial. Had he been alive and had denied the paternity of the child, the child would not have been ascribed to him. It would rather have been attributed to the slave woman. It was narrated from Abdullah that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, The child is the beds, and for the fornicator is the stone. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Abdurrahman al Nasai said, I do not think that this is from Abdullah bin Masood, and Allah Most High knows best. Chapter on the Bed of the Slave Woman It was narrated that Aisha said, Saad bin Abi Vakas and Abda bin Zamah disputed concerning a son of Zamah. Saad said, My brother Utbah urged me, if I came to Mecca, look for the son of the slave woman of Zamah, for he is my son. Abda bin Zamah said, He is the son of my father's slave woman who was born on my father's bed. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saw that he resembled Utbah, but he said, The child is the beds. Veil yourself from him, O Sauda. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments The purpose of the chapter is that as the children born to the wife are considered the husband's children, in the same manner the children born to a slave woman would be considered those of the owner, provided the husband or the owner does not disown them. Chapter on Drawing Lots for a Child if Several Men Dispute Over Him It was narrated that Zad bin Arkam said, Three men were brought to Ali while he was in Yemen. They all had intercourse with a woman during a single menstrual cycle. He asked two of them, Do you affirm that this child belongs to the third man? And they said no. He asked another two of them, Do you affirm that this child belongs to the third man? And they said no. So he cast lots between them and attributed the child to the one whom the lot fell and obliged him to pay two-thirds of the diya. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was told of this and he laughed so much that his back teeth became visible. This hadith is graded da'i for weak. Footnote, the diya. This refers to the value of the woman who was a slave. Comments. 
1. The original incident belonged to the period of ignorance because in Islam, three peoples copulating with one woman in her single purity is not possible. Since prescribed legal punishment could not be meted out upon the deeds of the period of ignorance, therefore solving this problem was required after the fact. 2. The one to whom the lot fell, when several individuals hold equal right and if it cannot be given to everyone, then the matter is decided by drawing lots or performing sortilage. 3. He imposed two-thirds of the dia upon him because they did not get the child. They were therefore given a sum of money. 4. He began to laugh at the intellect of Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, or at this wonderful incident. It was narrated that Zad bin Arkham said, While we were with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, a man came to him from Yemen and started telling him about an incident while Ali was still in Yemen. He said, O Messenger of Allah, Three men were brought to Ali who were disputing about a child and they all had intercourse with a woman during a single menstrual cycle and he quoted the same hadith. This hadith is graded da'i for weak. It was narrated that Zad bin Arkham said, I was with the messenger of Allah peace be upon him and Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, was in Yemen at that time. A man came to him and said, I saw Ali when three men were brought to him who all claimed to be the father of a child. Ali said to one of them, Will you give the child up to him? And he refused. He said to the next one, Will you give the child up to him? And he refused. He said to the next one, Will you give the child up to him? And he refused. Ali said, You are disputing partners. I will cast lots among you, and whoever wins the draw, the child is for him, and he has to pay two-thirds of the diya. The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, laughed so much that his back teeth became visible. It was narrated from a man from Hadramaut that Zad bin Arkam said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, sent Ali to be the governor of Yemen, and a child was brought to him concerning whom three men were disputing. This hadith is graded da'i for weak. Then he quoted the same hadith. Salama bin Kohel contradicted them. Salama bin Kohel said, I heard Ashabi narrating from Abu al-Khalil or Ibn Abi al-Khalil that three men had intercourse with the same woman during a single menstrual cycle. And he mentioned something similar, but he did not mention Zad bin Arkam or attribute anything to the Prophet peace be upon him. This hadith is graded da'i for weak. Abu Abdurrahman an Nasai said, This is correct, and Allah glorious is he and Most High knows best. Chapter on Detecting Family Likenesses It was narrated that Aisha said, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, came to me looking happy and cheerful, and he said, Did you not see that Mujaziz looked at Zad bin Haditha and Osama and said, These feet belong to one another? This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated that Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, came to me one day looking happy and said, O oh, Aisha, did you not see that Mujaziz al-Mudliji came to me when Osama bin Zad was with me? He saw Osama bin Zad and Zad with a blanket over them. Their heads were covered, but their feet were exposed, and he said, These feet belong to one another. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on when one parent becomes Muslim and the child is given the choice. It was narrated from Abdul Hamid bin Salama al Ansari, from his father, from his grandfather, that he became Muslim, but his wife refused to become Muslim. A young son of theirs who had not yet reached puberty came and the Prophet peace be upon him seated the father on one side and the mother on the other side and he gave him the choice. He said, O oh Allah, guide him. And the child went to his father. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments. If a husband and wife decide to go their separate ways, the child should remain in the custody of mother till the age of seven years. Thereupon the child shall be offered an option. He or she may choose to remain with the mother or the father. In the aforementioned incident, the father was a Muslim while the mother was an unbeliever. A child instinctively inclines toward his mother. Therefore, Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, supplicated the child should not go to the mother, otherwise the child had the danger of falling into disbelief. It was narrated that Abu Maimuna said, While I was with Abu Huraira, he said, A woman came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, May my father and mother be ransomed for you. My husband wants to take my son away, but he helps me and brings me water from the well of Abu Inaba. Her husband came and said, Who is going to take my son from me? The messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O oh boy, this is your father and this is your mother. Take the hand of whichever of them you want. He took his mother's hand and she left with him. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. 
This child might have been older than seven years of age but less than adult. In the event of dispute between father and mother, the child has the option to remain with either of the parents. The father cannot forcibly take the child. Till the age of seven, a child nonetheless remains dependent on the mother. On reaching puberty, he or she becomes independent or autonomous. 2. Bir Abi Inaba is a well which is situated outside of the city of Al Madina at a distance of about 16 kilometers. Chapter on the Idda of a woman separated by Kula. Ar Rubai bint Muawid bin Afra narrated that Thabit bin Qas bin Shamas hit his wife and broke her arm. Her name was Jamila bint Abdullah bin Ubay. Her brother came to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him to complain about him, and the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him sent for Thabit and said, Take what she owes you and let her go. He said yes. And the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him ordered her to wait for one menstrual cycle and then go to her family. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Obada bin Al-Walid bin Obada bin As-Samit narrated from Rubay bin Muawid. He said, I said to her, Tell me your hadith. She said I was separated from husband by Khula. Then I went to Uthman and asked him, What idda do I have to observe? He said, You do not have to observe any idda unless you had intercourse with him recently, in which case you should stay with him until you have menstruated. He said, In that I am following the ruling of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him concerning Maryam al-Maghaliya, who was married to Thabit bin Qas and was separated by Khula from him. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments 1. From the verdict of Uthman, it transpires that the waiting period of one menstrual cycle is also for acquittal from pregnancy or to verify that she is not pregnant. If sexual intercourse has not taken place during the woman's current purity, the tahur or the state of purity following menstruation, there is no waiting period even of one menstrual cycle. But since copulation is a concealed matter, the fact of the matter is that the woman granted a kula from her husband should wait for one menstrual cycle to intervene so that nothing is left to doubt or suspicion. 2. It should be borne in mind that returning, taking back is not possible in kula. Later, remarriage is possible because it does not fall in the category of a third divorce. Chapter on Exceptions to the Idda of Divorced Women it was narrated from Ibn Abbas with regard to Allah saying, Whatever a verse, revelation, do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring a better one or similar to it. Quran Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 106 And he said, And when we change a verse in place of another, and Allah knows best what he sends down. Quran Surah An-Nahl chapter 16 verse 101 And he said, Allah blots out what he wills and confirms what he wills, and with him is the mother of the book. Quran Surah Ar-Rad chapter 13 verse 39 The first thing that was abrogated in the Quran was the Qibla. And he said, And divorced women shall wait as regard their marriage for three menstrual periods. Quran Surah Al-Baqarah chapter 2 verse 228 And he said, and those of your women as have passed the age of monthly courses, for them the idda, if you have doubt about their periods, is three months. Quran Surah At-Talaq, chapter 65, verse 4. So some of that was abrogated, according to his Most High saying, and then divorce them before you have sexual intercourse with them. No idda have you to count in respect of them. Quran Surah Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, verse 49. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Footnote, see number 3584. Chapter on the Idda of a woman whose husband dies. It was narrated that Zainab bint Umm Salama said, Umm Habiba said, I heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him say, It is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah and the last day to mourn for anyone who dies for more than three days, except for a husband. She mourns for him for four months and ten days. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Zainab bint Umm Salama. I, the narrator, said, from her mother? He said, yes. That the Prophet, peace be upon him, was asked about a woman whose husband had died, but they were worried about her eyes. Could she use kohol? He said, one of you used to stay in her house wearing her shabbiest clothes for a year, then she would come out. No, the mourning period is four months and ten days. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. The waiting period of a woman whose husband dies is four months and ten days. There is consensus over this matter, provided the woman is not pregnant. She shall have to remain in the state of mourning during this period in which she will have to abstain from all sorts of adornment. Kohol or collyrium is also an adornment. 
She therefore may not apply collyrium during morning. If there is any trouble in one's eyes, some other medication could be utilized, which is not generally used as a means of adornment. 2. During the period of ignorance, it was custom to keep the woman whose husband had died secluded in a room for a period of one year. She was not even permitted to bathe and wash herself to the extent that she could not take a bath after menstruation. She also wore the same clothes the entire period. That is why they, the clothes, are called the worst garments in the Hadith. They used to smell so bad that if some animal touched her body, it would die. She used to be taken out of her room after one year. She was then handed camel's dung, which she would throw back over her head. So to say, now her bad condition has come to an end as a sign of the end of her waiting period. Islam prevented a widow from adornment only. She would continue to reside with the other members of the household. She would take a bath and wash herself. She would, however, abstain from new or attractive garments, jewelry, makeup, and other adornments and remain indoors as far as possible. It was narrated from Zainab bint Umm Salama that Umm Salama and Umm Habiba said, A woman came to the Prophet peace be upon him and said, My daughter's husband has died and I am worried about her eyes. Can I apply kohal to her? The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, One of you used to stay in mourning for a year, rather the mourning period is four months and ten days. And when that year had passed, she would go out and fling a piece of dung behind her. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, see number 3563. It was narrated from Safiya bint Abi Obad that she heard Hafsa bint Umar, the wife of the Prophet peace be upon him, narrate that the Prophet peace be upon him said, It is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah and the last day to mourn for anyone who dies for more than three days except for a husband. She should mourn for him for four months and ten days. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Mourning Arabic Hidad Signifies abstaining from something lawful, for instance, taking bath, washing, sleeping, etc. It does not signify perpetrating unlawfulness, for example, screaming, shrieking, wailing, whining, slapping the chest, shaving the head, etc. Mourning for more than three days is also not permitted for men. Women were especially mentioned because they generally indulge in mourning more than men. It was narrated from Safiya bint Abi Obad from one of the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and from Umm Salama, that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, it is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah and the last day to mourn for anyone who dies for more than three days except for a husband. She should mourn for him for four months and ten days. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. A similar report was narrated from Safiya bint Abi Ubaid from one of the wives of the Prophet peace be upon him and she is Umm Salama from the Prophet peace be upon him. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments the objective behind repetition of the narration concerning mourning is to display that in one place this report is transmitted on the authority of Umm Habiba, may Allah be pleased with her, in another on the authority of Umm Salama, in some other from Hafsa, may Allah be pleased with her, and in another on the authority of one of the other wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him. There is no conflict in them. Chapter on the Idda of a Pregnant Woman Whose Husband Dies it was narrated from Al-Miswar bin Makhrama that Subah al-Aslamiya gave birth one day after her husband died. She came to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and asked his permission to marry and he gave her permission to marry and she married. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments If a woman's husband dies and if she is pregnant, her waiting period according to the majority of the people of knowledge instead of four months and ten days ends when she delivers her burden. When the child is born, she is free when her postnatal bleeding, nifas, ceases. She may further marry. No mourning is required of her. It was the opinion of Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, that the latter is the waiting period of the two. That means, if the child is born before the expiration of the period of four months and ten days, the waiting period shall be four months and ten days, and if the four months and ten days intervene first or come to an end before the birth of the child, the waiting period shall be the childbirth. So to speak, he thought mourning has its own place and the childbirth has its own. It was narrated from Al-Miswar bin Makhrama that the Prophet peace be upon him commanded Subayah to get married when her nifas ended. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, nifas that is postnatal bleeding. It was narrated that Abu As-Sanabil said, Subayah gave birth 23 or 25 days after her husband died. And when her nifas ended, she expressed her wish to remarry and was criticized for that. Mention of that was made to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he said, There is nothing to stop her. Her term has ended. This hadith is graded hasan or good.
Abu Salama said, Abu Huraira and Ibn Abbas differed concerning the widow who gives birth after her husband's death. Abu Huraira said, she may be married. Ibn Abbas said, she has to wait for the longer of the two periods. They sent word to Umm Salama and she said, the husband of Subayya died and she gave birth 15 days, half a month after her husband died. She said, two men proposed marriage to her and she was inclined toward one of them. When they feared that she was becoming single-minded on this issue and not consulting her family, they said, it is not permissible for you to marry. She went to the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he said, it is permissible for you to marry, so marry whomever you want. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, the longer of the two periods. The dispute here is whether the pregnant widow's idda ends when she gives birth, even if that is only a few days after her husband's death, or when four months and ten days have passed since her husband's death. It was narrated that Abu Salama said, Ibn Abbas and Abu Huraira were asked about the woman whose husband dies when she is pregnant. Ibn Abbas said, she should wait for the longer of the two periods. Abu Huraira said, when she gives birth, it becomes permissible for her to marry. Abu Salama went to Umm Salama and asked her about that and she said, Subayya al-Aslamiya gave birth half a month after her husband died and two men proposed to her. One was young and one was old and she was inclined toward the young one. So the old one said, it is not permissible for you to marry. Her family was not there and he hoped that if he went to her family, they would marry her to him. She went to the messenger of Allah peace be upon him and he said, it is permissible for you to marry. So marry whomever you want. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Salama bin Abdurrahman said, it was said to Ibn Abbas concerning a woman who gives birth one day after her husband dies. Can she get married? He said, no, not until the longer of the two periods has ended. He said, Allah says, and for those who are pregnant, whether they are divorced or their husbands are dead, their idda, prescribed period, is until they lay down their burden. Quran, Surah At-Talaq, chapter 65, verse 4. He said, that only applies in the case of divorce. Abu Huraira said, I agree with my brother's son, meaning Abu Salama. He sent his slave Qurab and told him, go to Umm Salama and ask her, was this the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him? He came back and said, Yes, Subayya al-Aslamiya gave birth 20 days after her husband died, and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, told her to get married. And Abu As-Sanabil was one of those who proposed marriage to her. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Ibn Abbas maintained that the mourning period is essential in every condition and the childbirth too. But the command of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was different. Hence, Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, retracted his statement. May Allah be pleased with him. It was narrated from Suleiman bin Yasir that Abu Huraira, Ibn Abbas, and Abu Salama bin Abdurrahman were talking about the idda of a woman whose husband dies and she gives birth after her husband dies. Ibn Abbas said, she should observe idda for the longer of the two periods. Abu Salama said, no, it becomes permissible for her to marry when she has given birth. Abu Huraira said, I agree with my brother's son. So they sent word to Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and she said, Subayya al-Aslamiya gave birth shortly after her husband died. She consulted the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he told her to get married. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated that Umm Salama said, Subayya gave birth a few days after her husband died, and the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, told her to get married. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Suleiman bin Yasar that Abdullah bin Abbas and Abu Salama bin Abdurrahman disagreed concerning a woman who gave birth one day after her husband died. Abdullah bin Abbas said, she should wait for the longer of the two periods. Abu Salama said, when she has given birth, it becomes permissible for her to remarry. Abu Huraira came and said, I agree with my brother's son, meaning Abu Salama bin Abdurrahman. They sent Qurayb, the freed slave of Ibn Abbas, to Umm Salama to ask her about that. He came back to them and told them that she said, Subayya gave birth one day after her husband died. She mentioned that to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he said, It has become permissible for you to marry. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Abu Salama bin Abdurrahman said, Ibn Abbas, Abu Huraira, and I were together. And Ibn Abbas said, If a woman gives birth after her husband dies, her idda is the longer of the two periods. Abu Salama said, we sent Qurab to Umm Salama to ask her about that. He came to us and told us from her that the husband of Subayya died, and she gave birth a few days after her husband died. 
and the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him told her to get married. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Abu Salama bin Abdurrahman that Zana bint Abi Salama told him from her mother Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet peace be upon him, that a woman from Aslam who was called Subayya was married to her husband, and he died while she was pregnant. Abu As-Sanabil bin Ba'kak proposed to her but she refused to marry him. He said, You cannot get married until you have observed Idda for the longer of the two periods. Approximately twenty days later she gave birth. She went to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and he said, Get married. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments It transpires from the outward wordings of the hadith that Abu al-Sanabil had made the proposal immediately after the husband's death. But this is not correct. In actuality, he had proposed after the birth of the child. Abu Salama bin Abdurrahman said, While Abu Huraira and I were with Ibn Abbas, a woman came and said that her husband had died while she was pregnant. Then she had given birth less than four months after the day he died. Ibn Abbas said, You have to wait for the longer of the two periods. Abu Salama said, A man from among the companions of the Prophet peace be upon him told me that Subayya al-Aslamiya came to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and said her husband died while she was pregnant and she gave birth less than four months after he died. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him told her to get married. Abu Huraira said, And I bear witness to that. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Ubaidullah bin Abdullah narrated that his father wrote to Umar bin Abdullah bin Arkam al-Zuhri, telling him to go to Subayya bint al-Harith al-Aslamiya and ask her about her hadith and what the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him had said to her when she consulted him. Umar bin Abdullah wrote back to Abdullah bin Utbah telling him that Subayya told him that she was married to Sahal bin Khawla, who was from Banu Amir bin Luwe and who was one of those who had been present at Badr and her husband died during the farewell pilgrimage while she was pregnant. She gave birth soon after he died, and when her nifas ended, she adorned herself to receive proposals of marriage. Abu As-Sanabil bin Ba'kak, a man from Banu Abd Ad-Dar, went to her and said to her, Why do I see you adorned? Perhaps you want to get married, but by Allah you will not get married until four months and ten days have passed. Subayya said, When he said that to me, I put on my clothes in the evening and went to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and asked him about that. He ruled that it had become permissible for me to marry when I gave birth, and he told me to get married if I wanted to. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Upon delivery, birth of a child, the waiting period ends. But since marriage is not generally committed in the state of postnatal bleeding, nifas, it comes in some reports when you become pure. Otherwise, the postnatal bleeding is not included in the waiting period. It was narrated that Yazid bin Abi Habib that Muhammad bin Muslim Azuri wrote to him mentioning that Ubadullah bin Abdullah told him that Zufar bin Aus bin al hadathan al-Nasri told him that Abu As-Sanabil bin Ba'kak bin As-Sabak said to Subayya al-Aslamiya, It is not permissible for you to get married until four months and ten days, the longer of the two periods have passed. She went to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and asked him about that. She said that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him ruled that she could get married when she had given birth. She was nine months pregnant when her husband died, and she was married to Saad bin Khawla, who died during the farewell pilgrimage with the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. She married a young man from her people when she had given birth to the child. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Ubaidullah bin Abdullah that Abdullah bin Utbah wrote to Umar bin Abdullah bin al-Arkam al-Zuhri telling him, Go to Subayya bint al-Harith al-Aslamiya and ask her about the ruling of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him concerning her pregnancy. He said, So Umar bin Abdullah went to her and asked her. She told him that she was married to Saad bin Khawla, who was one of the companions of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him who had been present at Badr. He died during the farewell pilgrimage and she gave birth before four months and ten days had passed since her husband's death. When her nifas ended, Abu As-Sanabil, a man from Banu Abd Ad-Dar, went to her and saw that she had adorned herself. He said, perhaps you want to get married before four months and ten days have passed? She said, when I heard that from Abu As-Sanabil, I went to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and told him my story. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said, it is permissible for you to marry when you gave birth. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Sa'ad bin Khawla was an emigrant, but died in Mecca at the time of the farewell pilgrimage. 
Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, had expressed sorrow also over this incident. It was narrated that Muhammad said, I was sitting with some people in Al Kufa in a large gathering of the Ansar, among whom was Abdurrahman bin Abi Layla. They spoke about the story of Subayah, and I mentioned what Abdullah bin Utba bin Masood had said in meaning. One of the narrators, Ibn Aoun's saying was, When she gives birth, Ibn Abi Layla said, But his paternal uncle did not say that. I raised my voice and said, Would I dare to tell lies about Abdullah bin Utba when he is in the vicinity of Al Kufa? He said, Then I met Malik and said, what did Ibn Masud say about the story of Subayah? He said, He said, Are you going to be too strict with her and not allow her the concession with regard to the Idda? The shorter surah about women, At-Talaq, was revealed after the longer one, Al-Baqarah. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. Be too strict means if the woman is made to adhere to the ultimate waiting period, then it is placing undue hardship upon her. That means, if she gives birth to a child first, then she should complete four months and ten days, and if four months and ten days end first, she should wait for the child to be born. So to speak, Abdullah bin Masood did not approve of this. For a pregnant woman, he used to stipulate the delivery as the waiting period also. 2. Shorter surah about women means surah at-talaq in which the verse occurs, and those who are with child the end of their waiting period shall come when they deliver their burden, birth of a child. Quran, Surah at talaq Chapter 65, Verse 4 3. The longer one signifies that long or detailed surah in which women's issues have been delineated. This means Surah Al-Baqarah in which it has been mentioned that a woman whose husband dies should wait for a period of four months and ten days before she may remarry. 4. The purpose of Abdullah bin Masood is that the command concerning the pregnant woman was mentioned later. Therefore, they are exempt from the restriction or command of four months and ten days, and this appears to be the best view. It was narrated from al kama bin Qas that Ibn Masood said, Whoever wants, I will meet and debate with him and invoke the curse of Allah upon those who lie. The verse, and for those who are pregnant, whether they are divorced or their husbands are dead, their idda, prescribed period, is until they lay down their burden. Quran Surah At-Talaq chapter 65 verse 4 was only revealed after the verse about women whose husbands die. When a woman whose husband has died gives birth, it becomes permissible for her to marry. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. This is the wording of Mamun, one of the narrators. It was narrated from Abdullah that the shorter surah that speaks of women, At-Talaq, was revealed after Al-Baqarah. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments, see number 3551. Chapter on the Idda of a woman whose husband dies before consummating the marriage. It was narrated from Ibn Masood that he was asked about a man who married a woman but did not name a mahar or consummate the marriage before he died. Ibn Masood said, She should have a mahar like that of women like her, no less and no more. She has to observe the Idda, and she is entitled to inherit. Makil bin Sinan al ashjai stood up and said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, passed a similar judgment among us concerning Birwa bint Vashak, and Ibn Masood rejoiced at that. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Despite not having had copulation, she would be considered a wife because the marriage has been contracted. Non-fixation of the dower is not the negation of the marriage contract, although the dower should not be put off absolutely. See Hadith 3556. Chapter on Mourning It was narrated from Aisha that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, It is not permissible for a woman to mourn for anyone who dies for more than three days except for her husband. This Hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Aisha that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, It is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah and the last day to mourn for more than three days except for her husband. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Who believes in Allah? The denial of faith for an action indicates the act is unlawful. Chapter on Mourning is Waived for a Kitabi Widow it was narrated from Zainab bint Abi Salama that Umm Habiba said, I heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him say on this mimbar, It is not permissible for any woman who believes in Allah and his Messenger to mourn for anyone who dies for more than three days except for a husband, for whom the mourning period is four months and ten days. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. 
Comments. The deduction of evidence from this hadith for this chapter is based upon its apparent wordings. Chapter on the woman whose husband has died staying in her house until it becomes permissible for her to remarry. It was narrated from Al-Fariya bint Malik that her husband went out to pursue some slaves and they killed him. Shuba and Ibn Juraj said she was in a remote house. She came with her brothers to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and told him about the situation and he granted her a concession. When she was leaving, he called her back and said, Stay in your house until the term prescribed is fulfilled. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. From this we learn that during the waiting term caused by death, it is essential for the widow to remain in the house of her deceased husband. This is exactly the view adopted by the majority of the people of knowledge. But it is transmitted from Ali, Ibn Abbas, Aisha, and Jabir that she could spend her waiting term anywhere she likes. But this hadith corroborates spending the waiting term in the husband's house, and Allah knows best. 2. Remote house. Remote from habitation or from the kith and kin of the woman. It was narrated from al furaya bint Malik that her husband hired some slaves to work for him and they killed him. She mentioned that to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, I am not living in a house that belongs to him, and I do not receive maintenance from him. Should I move to my family with my two orphans and stay with them? He said, Do that. Then he said, What did you say? So she told him again, and he said, Observe your idda where the news came to you. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Fureya. In the previous narration, her name is mentioned as Faria. There is no conflict in it. Fureya is the diminution of Faria. She was called both. May Allah be pleased with her. It was narrated from Fureya that her husband went out to pursue some slaves of his and he was killed on the edge of al Qadum. She said, I came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and mentioned moving to join my family. She told him about her situation. She said, He allowed me then, when I turned to leave, he called me back and said, Stay with your family until the term prescribed is fulfilled. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Stay with your family. The home was not owned by her husband, but she was also not told to leave it. Chapter on Concession Allowing a Woman Whose Husband Has Died to Observe Her Idda Wherever She Wants it was narrated from Ibn Abbas that this verse abrogated the woman's idda among her family and she may observe her idda wherever she wants. That is the saying of Allah the Mighty and Sublime, without turning them out. Quran Surah Al-Baqarah Chapter 2 Verse 240 This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on the idda of a woman whose husband has died starts from the day the news reached her. Faraya bint Malik, the sister of Abu Sayyid al-Khudri said, My husband died in al qadum so I went to the Prophet peace be upon him and told him that our house was remote. He gave her permission, then he called her back and said, Stay in your house for four months and ten days until the term prescribed is fulfilled. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Since he did not say, minus the number of days that passed since his death, the author has used it to prove the chapter heading. Chapter on putting on adornment is for the grieving Muslim women, not for Jewish or Christian women. It was narrated from Humad bin Nafi that Zainab bint Abi Salama told him these three hadiths. Zainab said, I entered upon Umm Habiba, the wife of the Prophet peace be upon him, when her father Abu Sufyan bin Harb died. Umm Habiba called for some perfume and put some on a young girl, then she put some on her cheeks. Then she said, By Allah, I do not have any need for perfume. But I heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him say, It is not permissible for any woman who believes in Allah and the last day to mourn for anyone who dies for more than three days except for a husband, for whom the mourning period is four months and ten days. Zanab said, Then I went into Zanab bin Tijash when her brother died and she called for some perfume and put some on. Then she said, By Allah, I do not have any need for perfume, but I heard the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him say on the mimbar, it is not permissible for any woman who believes in Allah and the last day to mourn for anyone who dies for more than three days, except for a husband, for whom the mourning period is four months and ten days. Zanab said, I heard Umm Salama say, A woman came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, O Messenger of Allah, my daughter's husband has died, and she has a problem in her eye. Can I put kohal on her? The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, No. Then he said, It is four months and ten days. During the Jahiliyyah, one of you would throw a piece of dung at the end of the year. 
Homad said, I said to Zanab, What is this throwing a piece of dung at the end of the year? She said, If a woman's husband died, she would enter a small room, hifsh, and wear her worst clothes, and she would not put on perfume or anything until a year. Then an animal would be brought, a donkey or sheep or bird, and she would end her idda with it, clean herself with it, and usually any animal used for that purpose would die. Then she would come out and would be given a piece of dung which she would throw, then she would go back to whatever she wanted of perfume, etc. In the narration of Muhammad bin Salama, Malik said, Hifsh means hut. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. I do not have any need for perfume because my husband has long been dead. Besides, applying perfume after three days mourning is not essential either. In order to end suspicion of mourning, it is, however, recommended to apply perfume, etc. For further details, see Hadith 3531 to 32. Chapter on what dyed clothes should be avoided by the woman in mourning. It was narrated that Umm Atiya said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, No woman should mourn for anyone who dies for more than three days, except for a husband for whom she should mourn for four months and ten days. She should not wear garments that are dyed or patterned or put on kohol or comb or hair, and she should not put on any perfume except when purifying herself after her period, when she may use a little of kust or asvar. Two types of incense. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. A dyed garment means the garment which has been dyed after it has been woven. Generally, such color happens to be bright. 2. Pattern. The original Arabic term used is thab asab, which means the garment which has been dyed before it has been woven. 3. Can use a little perfume. Such a perfume is not meant for adornment. It is meant for hiding or preventing the unpleasant smell of menses. Moreover, such a perfume would be applied under the belly after menstruation and not on the rest of the body. It was narrated from Safiya bint Sheba from Umm Salama, the wife of the Prophet peace be upon him, that the Prophet peace be upon him said, The woman whose husband has died should not wear clothes that are dyed with safflower or red clay, and she should not use dye or kohol. This hadith is graded hasan or good. Comments The garment which is dyed after being woven is forbidden to wear, irrespective of whether it is dyed with any stuff or substance or any color. The term mishk means fairly red in color, with which they used to dye garments. Nowadays, flower pattern clothes are also dyed later, hence they are not permitted. Plain, colorless garments should be used in mourning. Chapter on a woman in mourning dyeing her hair. It was narrated from Umm Atiyah that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, It is not permissible for a woman who believes in Allah and the last day to mourn for anyone who dies for more than three days, except for a husband. She should not use kohol, dye, nor wear dyed clothes. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on concession allowing a woman in mourning to comb her hair with lote leaves. Umm Hakim bint Asid narrated from her mother that her husband died and she had a problem in her eyes, so she applied kohol to clear her eyes. She sent a freed slave woman of hers to Umm Salama to ask her about using kohol to clear her eyes. She said, Do not use kohol unless it cannot be avoided. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, entered upon me when Abu Salama died, and I had put some aloe juice on my eyes. He said, What is this, O Umm Salama? I said, It is aloe juice, O Messenger of Allah. There is no perfume in it. He said, It makes the face look bright, so only use it at night, and do not comb your hair with perfume or henna, for it is a dye. I said, With what can I comb it, O Messenger of Allah? He said, With lote leaves. Cover your head with them. This hadith is graded da'i for weak. Comments. Anything that brings color, for instance, colorium or henna or anything that beautifies the face and makes it glow, for instance, aloe or anything that emanates fragrance, scented soap, scent, etc., are forbidden to women during the morning period. One could, however, take a bath and use unscented soap. Chapter on Prohibition of Kohol for a Woman in Mourning Zainab bint Abi Salama narrated that her mother, Umm Salama, said, A woman from the Quraysh came and said, O Messenger of Allah, my daughter's eyes are inflamed. Shall I apply kohol to her? The daughter's husband had died. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Not until four months and ten days have passed. Then she said, I fear for her sight. He said, No, not until four months and ten days have passed. During the Jahiliya, one of you would mourn for her husband for a year. Then when one year had passed, she would throw a piece of dung. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. 
It was narrated from Zainab bint Abi Salama from her mother that a woman came to the Prophet peace be upon him and asked him about her daughter whose husband had died and she was ill. He said, One of you used to mourn for a year, then throw a piece of dung when a year had passed. Rather it, the mourning period, is four months and ten days. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Zainab bint Abi Salama from Umm Salama that a woman from the Quraysh came to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and said, My daughter's husband has died and I am worried about her eyes. She needs kohl. He said, One of you used to throw a piece of dung after a year had passed. Rather it, the mourning period is four months and ten days. I, the narrator, said to Zainab, What does after a year had passed mean? She said, During the Jahiliyyah, if a woman's husband died, she would go to the worst room she had and stay there. Then when a year had passed, she would come out and throw a piece of dung behind her. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Zainab that a woman asked Umm Salama and Umm Habiba whether she could put on kohol during her idda following her husband's death. She said a woman came to the Prophet peace be upon him and asked him about that and he said, During the Jahiliyyah, if her husband died, one of you would stay in mourning for a year. Then she would throw a piece of dung then come out. Rather it, the mourning period, is four months and ten days until the term prescribed is fulfilled. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on Kust and Asvar, Two Types of Incense for the Woman in Mourning It was narrated from Hafsa, from Umm Atiyah, from the Prophet peace be upon him, that he granted a concession to the woman whose husband has died, allowing her to use Kust and Asfar when purifying herself following her menses. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments Kust and Asvar are the kinds of incense which were used in that period of time. The ruling concerning other perfumes is also the same the use of which is forbidden during the waiting period. Their use, however, at the end of menstruation is permitted. Kust means costus, oud, a certain substance or perfume, Indian wood and also Arabian, with which one fumigates. Asfar is a certain odoriferous substance called unguis odorati. It is black, resembling fingernails. Chapter on abrogation of maintenance and residence for the widow which are replaced by the share of inheritance that is allotted to her. It was narrated from Ibn Abbas with regard to Allah saying, And those of you who die and leave behind wives should bequeath for their wives a year's maintenance and residence without turning them out. Quran Surah Al-Baqarah Chapter 2 Verse 240 This was abrogated by the verse on inheritance which allocated to her one quarter or one eighth. And the appointed time, idda, of one year was abrogated and replaced with the idda term of four months and ten days. This hadith is graded hasan or good. It was narrated from Ikrama with regard to the saying of Allah the Mighty and Sublime, And those of you who die and leave behind wives should bequeath for their wives a year's maintenance and residence without turning them out. Quran Surah Al-Baqarah Chapter 2 Verse 240 That he said, This was abrogated by and those of you who die and leave wives behind them, they, the wives, shall wait as regards their marriage for four months and ten days. Quran Surah Al-Baqarah Chapter 2 Verse 234 This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on Concession Allowing an Irrevocably Divorced Woman to Leave Her House During Her Idda Abdurrahman bin Asim narrated that Fatima bint Qas, who was married to a man of Banu Makhzum, told him that he divorced her three times. He went out on a military campaign and told his representative to give her some provision. She thought it was too little, so she went to one of the wives of the Prophet peace be upon him and the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him came in while she was with her. She said, O Messenger of Allah, this is Fatima bint Qas, who has been divorced by so and so. He sent her some provision but she rejected it. He said that it was something he did not have to do, a favor. He said, he is telling the truth. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Go to Umm Kalthum and observe your idda in her house. Then he said, Umm Kalthum is a woman who has a lot of visitors. Go to Abdullah bin Umm Maktoum for he is blind. So she went to Abdullah and observed her idda in his house until her idda was over. Then Abu al-Jahm and Muawiyah bin Abi Sufyan proposed to her. So she came to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him to consult him about them. He said, As for Abu al-Jahm, he is a man the waving of whose stick I fear for you. And as for Muawiyah, he is a man who does not have any money. So she married Osama bin Zaid after that. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Comments 
Om Salama, this is not correct. In other reports, there is mention of Om Sharik, and this is correct. For the rest of the details, please turn to narration 3224, 3239, 3246, and 3247. It was narrated from Abu Salama bin Abdurrahman that Fatima bint Qas told him that she was married to Abu Amr bin Hafs bin al mughira who divorced her by giving her the last of three divorces. Fatima said that she came to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and consulted him about leaving her house. He told her to move to the house of Ibn Umm Maktoum, the blind man. Marwan refused to believe Fatima about the divorced woman leaving her house. Urwa said, Aisha denounced Fatima for that. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments See the references of the previous hadith. Hisham narrated from his father that Fatima said, I said, O Messenger of Allah, my husband has divorced me three times, and I am afraid that my house be broken into, so he told her to move. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments The house of the husband was farther from the habitation, the husband was not at home, the woman was young, so to speak there were many dangers. It was narrated that Ashabi said, I came to Fatima bint Qas and asked her about the ruling of the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him concerning her. She said that her husband divorced her irrevocably and she referred her dispute with him concerning accommodation and maintenance to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him. She said he did not give me the right to accommodation and maintenance and he told me to observe my idda in the house of Ibn Umm Maktoum. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated that Fatima bint Qas said, My husband divorced me and I wanted to move, so I went to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and he said, Move to the house of your paternal cousin Amr bin Umm Maktoum and observe your idda there. Al-Aswad hit him, a shabi, with a pebble and said, Woe be to you, why do you issue such a fatwa? Omar said, If you bring two witnesses who will testify that they heard that from the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him, we will believe you. Otherwise, we will not leave the Book of Allah for the word of a woman and turn them not out of their husbands' homes, nor shall they themselves leave except in case they are guilty of some open fahisha. Quran Surah At-Talaq Chapter 65 Verse 1 This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments 1. It has previously been pointed out that numerous companions of the Prophet peace be upon him did not acknowledge the apparent result of this narration that the lodging and maintenance of an irrevocably divorced woman are not incumbent upon the husband. They consider this incident as specific to Fatima bint Qas, which means there must have been some distinct reason. See the details in Hadith 3224. Fatima bint Qas used to say, in response to this verse, that the description here pertains to those divorces in which returning is possible. It transpires from, after that Allah may well cause something new to come about. In the upcoming words, when an irrevocably divorced woman cannot be taken back, is asked what is the good in her residing in the husband's house. There are rather numerous perils in it. 2. Omar, may Allah be pleased with him, did not consider it essential that for each hadith two witnesses be produced, and only then it shall be accepted. On the contrary, he considered this narration contrary to what he was certain of. That is why he stated like this. Otherwise, on numerous occasions, one man's narration has been acknowledged and acted upon. For instance, narrations concerning levying the protection tax from a majayan and about exiting a plague-stricken province. Chapter on Widow Going Out During the Day It was narrated from Jabir that his maternal aunt was divorced and she wanted to go out to some date palms of hers, but she met a man who told her not to do that. She went to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he said, Go out and take the harvest of your date palms, for perhaps you will give zakah or do some good, give voluntary charity. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments. If necessary, a mourning woman may work at home and on a farm. It is quite possible she might have no one to work on her behalf. And the divine law takes into consideration people's needs and inabilities. Chapter on Maintenance of an Irrevocably Divorced Woman It was narrated that Abu Bakr bin Hafs said Abu Salama and I entered upon Fatima bint Qas who said, My husband divorced me and he did not give me any accommodation or maintenance. She said he left me with ten measures, akfiza of food with a cousin of his, five of barley and five of dates. I went to the messenger of Allah peace be upon him and told him about that. He said he has spoken the truth and he told me to observe my idda in the house of so-and-so. 
and her husband had divorced her irrevocably. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Footnote, narrated that Abu Bakr bin Hafs, this is considered an error by one of the copyists, what is correct is Abu Bakr bin Abi al-Jahm, as found for this narration in Al-Kubra and affirmed in Tuhfat al-Ashraf, see number 3447. Comments Akfiz is plural of kafiz. They say that an kafiz is equal to about 4 kilos. Chapter on Maintenance of a Pregnant Woman Who Has Been Irrevocably Divorced Ubaidullah bin Abdullah bin Utba narrated that Abdullah bin Amr bin Uthman divorced the daughter of Sayyid bin Zaid, whose mother was Hamna bint Qas, irrevocably. Her maternal aunt Fatima bint Qas told her to move from the house of Abdullah bin Amr. Marwan heard of that, so he sent a word to her telling her to go back to her home until her idda was over. She sent a word to him telling him that her maternal aunt Fatima had issued a fatwa to that effect and she told her that the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him had issued a fatwa to her, telling her to move when Abu Amr bin Hafs al Makhzumi divorced her. Marwan sent Kabisa bin Thuwayb to Fatima to ask her about that. She said that she had been married to Abu Amr when the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him appointed Ali bin Abi Talib as governor of Yemen, and he went out with him. Then he sent word to her divorcing her, and that was the final divorce for her. He told her to ask Al-Harith bin Hisham and Ayash for her provisions that her husband had allocated for her. They said, by Allah, she is not entitled to any provision. So she sent to Al-Harith bin Hisham and Ayash asking them for the provisions from us unless she is pregnant. And she has no right to live in our house unless we permit her. Fatima said that she went to the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and told him about that and he said that they had told the truth. She said, I said, where shall I move to, O Messenger of Allah? He said, Move to the house of Ibn Umm Maktoum, who was the blind man concerning whom Allah rebuked him in his book. I moved to his house, and I used to take off my outer garments. Then the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, married her to Osama bin Zaid. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Chapter on Periods it was narrated from Amr bin Az-Zubair that Fatima bint Abi Hubash told him that she came to the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him and complained to him about continual bleeding. The Messenger of Allah peace be upon him said to her, That is a vain. Look and when your period comes, do not pray. And when your period ends, then purify yourself and pray during the time between one period and the next. This hadith is graded Hassan or good. Chapter on Abrogation of the Permission to Take Back One's Wife After the Three Divorces It was narrated from Ibn Abbas regarding Allah saying, Whatever a verse do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring a better one or similar to it. Quran Surah Al-Baqarah Chapter 2 Verse 106 And, and when we change a verse in place of another and Allah knows best what He sends down. Quran Surah An-Nahl Chapter 16 Verse 101 and Allah blots out what He wills and confirms what He wills, and with Him is the mother of the book. Quran Surah Ar-Rad, Chapter 13, Verse 39 The first thing that was abrogated in the Quran was the Qibla, and He said, And divorced women shall wait as regards their marriage for three menstrual periods, and it is not lawful for them to conceal what Allah has created in their wombs, if they believe in Allah and the last day. And their husbands have better right to take them back in that period if they wish for reconciliation. Quran Surah Al-Baqarah Chapter 2 Verse 228 That is because when a man divorced his wife, he had more right to take her back even if he had divorced her three times. Then Allah abrogated that and said, The divorce is twice. After that, either you retain her on reasonable terms or release her with kindness. Quran Surah Al-Baqarah Chapter 2 Verse 229 this hadith is graded Hassan or good. Footnote. It should be noted that the same chain and text preceded number 3529, although there are some differences in the wording. Comments. The return of a woman who is in her waiting period from an unfinalized non-threefold divorce to the state of marriage is possible twice only. After the pronouncement of the third divorce, the woman becomes unlawful, neither returning, taking back, nor remarriage. This is an agreed-upon issue. Chapter on Taking the Wife Back Ibn Umar said, I divorced my wife when she was menstruating. Umar went to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and told him about that. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Tell him to take her back. Then when she becomes pure, if he wants to, let him divorce her. I said to Ibn Umar, Did that count as one divorce? He said, Why not? 
What do you think if some becomes helpless and behaves foolishly? This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments When she becomes pure, there is clarification in other narrations that when she is purified and she again enters the period of menstruation, and she is again purified after passing through the period of menses, and then if he so desires, he may keep her, and if he desires, can divorce her. And this intervening period of purity is meant for the act of returning or taking back. During the state of menstruation, only verbal returning or taking back is possible. For details, see Hadith 3418. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that he divorced his wife when she was menstruating. Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, mentioned that to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and he said, Tell him to take her back until she menstruates again. Then when she becomes pure, if he wants, he may divorce her, and if he wants, he may keep her. This is the divorce that Allah has enjoined. Allah the Mighty and Sublime says the divorce is twice. After that, either you retain her on reasonable terms or release her with kindness. Quran Surah At-Talaq, Chapter 65, Verse 1 This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. When Ibn Umar was asked about a man who divorced his wife when she was menstruating, he would say, if it is the first or second divorce, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would tell him to take her back and keep her until she has menstruated again and purified herself, then divorce her before having intercourse with her. But if it was three simultaneous divorces, then you have disobeyed Allah with regard to the way in which divorce should be conducted and your wife has become irrevocably divorced. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Comments, and you have disobeyed Allah with regard to the divorce of your wife, what he had commanded you means by divorcing in the state of menstruation, but that divorce counts, when it is the third divorce final separation between the couple would take place. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that he divorced his wife when she was menstruating and the messenger of Allah peace be upon him told him to take her back. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. Ibn Ta'us narrated from his father that he heard Abdullah bin Umar being asked about a man who divorced his wife when she was menstruating. He said, Do you know Abdullah bin Umar? He said, Yes. He said, He divorced his wife when she was menstruating, and Umar went to the Prophet peace be upon him and told him about that. He ordered him to take her back until she became pure, and I did not hear him adding anything to that. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic. It was narrated from Umar that the Prophet, peace be upon him, Umar, one of the narrators, said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, had divorced Hafsa, then he took her back, and Allah knows best. This hadith is graded sahih or authentic.